Hello there, tea drinkers. Welcome back to the Game of Muscle YouTube channel and welcome to this live stream where we're going to be playing Automobilista 2. After last night, we had a bit of a bash on it. We did two races and actually thought it was all right. I thought, hang on a minute. It seemed like, we, it seemed like this might be quite good now. So I thought we could do some uh, nice sprint races here. So if you're watching this as a catch-up video, you could just you could just skip ahead. I mean, you'll be like, now you're like, ah, oh, it was a live stream. That's a video. I'm disappointed. You could just click ahead or you could subscribe, click the like button, and then you'll be notified when we next do a live stream and you can join in with us. But uh, for those people that are joining us live, we are going to do some some sprint racing. Hopefully, <laughs> if it if it all works. Hello, original Simstig. Hello, A and Tabusa. Hello, Court Marshal. Hello, Sky Star. Look at that YouTube delay. I, I think I get what is it? Forty seconds to talk before. That's how long it takes the uh, Google servers <laughs> to notify everybody. Um, also, of utmost importancy today. Importancy? I've just made a word up. Importancy. It'd be the, the correct say would be of utmost import. Importancy. <laughs> I'm going to use that word more often because I made it. It's my own little word. No one else is going to ever use it. But of import is um, my socks. Look at these today. Whoa! <laughs> Look at those. I'm sorry, but I've, I'm taking sim racing sock game to the to the new, to a new level. I'm innovating. Pe people say, "Ah, oh, you know these YouTubers, they don't do anything. They they don't deserve they don't deserve subscribers and donations and all that." But look, when you, when your sock game is as good as mine, <laughs> and of course, if you want to get socks like this, <laughs> use my Amazon affiliate link. I can't even remember what brand they are. I just typed in colourful socks on Amazon and then I do what Amazon tells me. Barber poles, ironically. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense that from that view. Yeah, I'm proud of my socks. I don't get out much. So I'm going to make a server. Send me some real socks. Uh, what about CGI? <laughs> uh, what what should we start with it? Um, uh, you know, you do need Automobilista 2 to join in with us. I want to start with something. Let's go back to the classics. See how these go. This is what we... These are the best cars in Automobilista 2. Hey, Die Phillips. Well, I was meant to do a... I was meant to do a video today. But I woke up <laughs> way too late... I took half a sleeping tablet last night, um, thinking, ah, oh, that let me sleep, and it did a bit too well. I forgot they, they don't wear off for like 12 hours, so I took the sleeping tablet at midnight. I should have took it at like 8 or something. <laughs> so I woke up in the middle of the day like, what's going on? Uh, oh, rental carts, that is a good idea. Well, I'll tell you what, we'll start with this, and then we'll do some rental carts. Yeah, this is, I, 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 this is all from the same company. Oh, I should have mentioned the Fanatec link. I need a graphic for that as well. A any of you in chat buying Fanatec stuff, use my link. If it wasn't for my Fanatec link, link I would have been, like, uh, screwed. So, appreciate you all buying stuff with that. Nice to see you back, Mr. Streams. Yeah, no, I, I really enjoy streaming. I like doing videos. Um, I, I just wasn't well. <laughs> Not in a not in a bad way. Like um, since the COVID thing, I sometimes get like if I do anything active, I then have like massive fatigue afterwards. So I just need to chill out and just take not over not do anything overactive, and uh, then it's then it's okay. And then gradually build things up. It is getting better. But you know, I like to go kayaking and walking and stuff. And when I'm already doing an activity, I'm like, yay, I'm great. And then the next three days, I'm like, ah, I can't move. <laughs> But yeah, it's, there's nothing severely wrong with me, so we're, we're all good. But yeah, I, I really enjoy I really enjoy making videos and live streaming. So um, yeah, if I'm not doing it, it's uh, normally because something's in the way. <laughs> Weirdly, I, you get a lot of YouTubers and uh, streamers and stuff having all these mental breakdowns about. They're like, "Oh my God, oh no, sim racing or the world, no, I 
can't do it. <laughs> I actually, I really enjoyed doing the videos and live streaming. I don't enjoy reading some of the comments on some of the videos when there's the, some of the flight sim comments. I'm just like, I, only because the comments are dumb <laughs> and not funny. <laughs> but uh, I don't know, flight sim racing is all right, actually. This is my job, uh, Hatch, uh, the YouTube thing. Right, I've got to get this house set up. We're going to call it Game of Muscle. Type uh, Automobile Lister 2 if you're going to join us. Let's call it Game of Muscle. Oh, I need to increase the slot number. And I'll password it with a password T. We got like 15 people in last night randomly and I hadn't even titled the stream properly. So we should be able to fill this up. Don't know why this, this resets automatically. It must be like a bug. I oh, know. We... <laughs> 23. I might need to turn my bandwidth down if we're getting things run slow. We'll see. Okay. Nice thing with this is that you can fill with AI opponents if you're just racing with friends. And you've only got a couple of friends. Uh, I find a nice track. So that would be good. Um, nice red ball ring. <laughs> Tra trauma. You'll have a trauma after you've been crashed into on that. Velo Cassetta. Isn't that that city track? What they need to do is have pictures here of the tr from the tracks rather than the just the layout. Because it's very hard to like... Oh, there we go. VIR, perfect. It's very hard to uh, <laughs> to like... If you've never been to a track before, to be like... To glance at it and go, oh, yes, that's a track I want to drive on. Nibal Uman got scared off once upon a time when things got heatedly off topic. Things always get off topic. Uh, but that's all right. Like, I'd like to think that... Um, even if we're talking off topic about stuff, we're normally uh, just like fairly rounded about talking about things, you know? So I like people in chat will have like mental views, maybe. Well, stuff I certainly don't agree with, but I'm still going to be, uh, just have a nice chat. <laughs> like, we're not, we're not, we're not stabbing each other with knives here. You know, it's all just about having fun. Uh, right. I think that should all work. Uh, I believe. Yeah, see if people can join in. Might take a while for people to be able to see the server. Or for people to actually fill it up. Do I need to wave a, a flag? <laughs> Paul Smith, the great June. How's it going, man? I keep seeing your... Um... Well, that's good. I keep seeing your notifications when you uh, live stream. Uh, for some reason, I it works. Twitch notifications actually work for me. I'm always like, oh, it's Paul Smith. He's got. He's back to the train sim, though. He was playing flight sim. Here we go. Tea's all right today. Actually, I just got. I just bought a water filter. Have you got AMS too? <laughs> I was gonna be driving around by myself at this rate. We'll just. I just talked to Paul Smith whilst we wait. <laughs> Tra Train Sim Saturdays. Actually, I can go on track and people can still join the server, can't they? So uh, we'll see if it fills up. One out of 25. It should all work. Let's get on there and start driving. Oh, you should you should get it. Um, email. I'll, I'll give you an email address and maybe, uh, maybe they'll give you a key. So you can... Because I think uh, you might actually enjoy it. At times, you know. Filter for the tap. No, it's just just a Brit, uh, Britta filter. That's what I bought. <laughs> they, had a, they had a deal on Amazon. It was like um, 20 quid for a Britta filter with six months, six, six filters or something. Because I, I thought I'd see it filtering my tea. My, my water is really hard water, but I quite like that. But I think with cups of tea, I'm not sure if I prefer filtered water or not. It definitely makes it more consistent. 
I don't know. The thing is, I find with tea, the two things that change the flavour, well, three things. Obviously, the tea bag you use. But if you use full full cream milk or skimmed or, you know, whatever, like you, different milk really changes the flavour of it and how much milk you use. Um, but uh, the water definitely changes. Like, if you've got heart, like the type of water, because obviously tea is mostly water, isn't it, really? When you buy from Amazon, can you use your own? No, you're not allowed to. It, it doesn't work. I, I try and use other people's links. Uh, I've got a couple of friends that like a uh, like random call sign. I think it's got one. I've been telling T and Muesli to get one. <laughs> just don't set it up. I just set up an affiliate link. Um, and I have some other friends that aren't YouTubers that because um, anyone can set up an Amazon affiliate link. You might as well do that. You, you can actually get a reasonable amount of money from it. I finally got a separate phone line fitted yesterday, so now I'm unaffected by others. What, you on, like, dial-up? <laughs> dial-up internet, Paul. He's living in the 90s. Oh, I'm on dial-up internet. Oh, someone joined the server. There we go. Nice one. Jesus, a bit loud. Thanks, Chan. Yeah, exactly. Just set up a... So what I've noticed is I, I set up links for USA, UK, Canada, Germany, God knows what, Holland, everything. Most people ordering... For sim racing channels, most of my, most my viewership and stuff is UK, Germany, and uh, America, North America. There's actually a lot of Dutch people who watch sim racing. Password is T... got stuck off the corner there but uh yeah amazon affiliates are good i mean apart from the fact that you're propping up an evil business empire <laughs> aside from that it's quite good hey it's cut this is nice now hello leg laugh so what are you up to paul i've not i've not actually seen you for a while and sometimes i see your I try and pop, pop your uh, stream on. Sometimes I don't pop in the chat because you're too friendly and you start talking. I'm like, oh, I'm feeling antisocial. I don't want to talk to you. <laughs> I feel bad, like if you're another YouTuber and you jump into someone else's chat and, you know, there might have people in the chat, they're like, oh, hello, hello. And you're like, well, I f you know, you feel like you're sort of encroaching on the other person's live stream a bit. So it's like you feel like a bit of a dick. <laughs> Paul's always like really nice and friendly. You don't mind the lurkers. So, yeah, sometimes I'll leave it on. I'm watching like a perv. <laughs> yeah. I, you got them lurkers. Pervy lurkers. Otherwise, uh, if I feel like being irritating, then I type a message just to annoy you. I type something that I know is a little bit annoying. <laughs> Troll muscle. Yeah, these cars are nice. Late corner understeer is definitely like an inherent aspect to this sim, but you could, you know, you can learn around it and you can get around it on the by putting more, more throttle on. Is AMS2 a sim or sim? It's never been a sim case. So to really like distinguish between a game being a sim and a sim case, it's more about developer intention and how you decide to approach it. I think. Because you could have a game that's technically a simulator, but it's shit. That doesn't make it sim -cade. It just makes it a shit simulator. <laughs> you know. Well, it doesn't really matter if something's a sim -cade or sim anyway, does it? It's like, is it fun or not? And I think uh, it's more consistent now, which makes it more fun. Paul's not a nice guy. Unless you need a chimney dismantling. <laughs> Take that chimney down. Oh, get brick off chimney. I just I just feel sad that Paul hasn't actually lived his dream as a real world train driver. I think I think really what you need to do is get a train license and live stream from uh, vi not like a com not like a passenger train, not a um, not a you know, not like a British rail train, but like um you know there's that steam train that they run from the north to the south? They do it like every week across Devon. I think it was the one that you were looking out to see. They need to... Uh, you, you need to be the uh, 
conductor of that <laughs> and then live stream it. I, I that'd be nothing. That'd be that'd be amazing. I'd watch that. It'd keep cutting out every time the train went through the countryside, but. Where are they going to ha had suspension animations? Uh, I don't know. Although, didn't, doesn't it already have suspension animations? Maybe it's something they're working on. T in capital letters, Mr. ASMR James. T, 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 T. It's always T in capital letters. I found out that European Tram Driver Championship. Ah, oh, nice. <laughs> That'd be stressful being a tram driver because cars act as if there's no trams. Like, they just drive onto them and you have people walking in front of you. I've scared Paul Smith off. He, actually, he's doing the uh, train conductor's... Uh, <laughs> he's taking the train conductor's test as we speak. Oh, you do you, the same thing that Squirrel did? It's definitely worth doing. It's, it's very expensive if you pay for it. it I, I think... I remember you saying, actually, you wanted to... Because you did that sim video, and then you wanted to try and take things up a notch. Yeah, I think that'd be... I'd love to do that. I think it'd be a nice... A nice experience to do. Take it up a notch. <laughs> Yeah, I think driving a train in real life, like, not as a job, but if you could choose when to do it, maybe like a freight train. Uh, used to, I used to have trains that went behind the back of my uh, house when I was growing up as a kid. <laughs> it's uh, it pretty cool, actually. The wheels would fall off the trains occasionally, which was weird. I think they, the trains that they took behind my house would be the ones which were like destined to be dismantled or something so they're probably not the most that you know they weren't passenger trains he's up north oh nice people are getting in the server nice one they're trying to hit your house <laughs> Yeah, it was a weird house, actually, that. We only... Uh, I think my family only moved because someone threw a brick through my sister's bedroom window. <laughs> my parents were like, uh, okay, I'm staying here. Whoa! Yeah. Yeah, I'd actually really like to drive a train in real life. I didn't realise it. Just just thinking about it now, it, it does occur to me that that would be a really awesome thing to do. Just once. I'd actually, you know, it, I'd want to drive a steam train. <laughs> I want to have a go on one of those trains where you push the thing up and down. Like one of those 1920s black and white silent movies. <laughs> and then a tra and you're going across a bridge and another train comes. It was actually all right. I think it was just because of the train line people could go to the back of the house and there was obviously the fencing was just fencing so people would walk up and down the train line and uh you know could actually break in really easily it wasn't a bad area it and i think it's probably just teenagers being stupid to be honest they weren't burgling or anything i pulled coal trains over the horseshoe curve <laughs> what in real life or or um in train sim. Bloody hell, this corner. I need uh, more rear brake brace. It's breaking in a straight line. This car, you can't change the brake bias on the fly, but you can change it in the pits. 57.43 is normally quite good for me in most sims. Between 50 to 55 often. My tune, I don't know what you mean. Oh, you've what been a... Oh, hello. Demand. Necessity. Necessity for money. I'm not supplying money for necessities. <laughs> Please explain why I watch good steering wheels being tossed in birth. <laughs> Bad muscles. Thanks for that. Thanks, Pixel Therapy, for the donation, man. 
Well, you know, I thought I, I was trying to be humorous for the start of the video, and uh, wheels were wheels were harmed. <laughs> Where is it, like? I'm not the one asking you guys where my wheel is. I've actually... It's a good point. Where has my... <laughs> I've lost my wheel. I've lost my new wheel. Oh, it's upstairs because I was uh, doing some random stuff with it. <laughs> yeah, I, I did... Uh, I ripped the Alcantara on the bottom, but I fixed it with some super glue. <laughs> uh, you know, that's the last time Fanatec sent me something to review. <laughs> What's weird is it didn't damage it throwing it off the hill. Uh, what broke, what ripped it was um, I dropped it on a stone and the stone happened to poke into it. Um, the whole throwing it and rolling it along the ground and everything didn't actually damage it. Or, or it's actually pretty durable. It's surprisingly how durable it is. Uh, but yeah, I dropped it right on a on a sharp stone. That's what cut it. But oh, it's good good durability test, I guess. I did throw it. Yeah, my, uh, my sister was there to catch it. So it's all right. <laughs> right, we've got uh, brake bias, blah, blah, blah. Rear diff I need to adjust as well. Can I do it on this car? I don't know if you can on this car. Uh, someone asked me a question before that generous donation, um, and I think I missed it. I'm sorry. Um, feel free to type it again, and I'll try my best to not be useless. Did you just try to generalise brake bias for every car and every sim without taking into account centre pressure, downforce, tyre loading, yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Um, I just, I just said in general, my it's normally between fifty three and fifty seven, or so. And I, I like brake bias to be quite far back, relatively speaking. There's no um. I mean, I could stiffen the anti-roll bar, but there's... Um... We don't have a... Um... No. There's no uh, rear diff setting on this car. So, just have to drive it as it is. Deal with it. Oh, what tune did it? What tune? I don't know. It's um, Epidemic Sounds uh, dance music playlist. So if you go to Epidemic Sounds and just go on the dance music playlist, you'll probably hear what I've got. I, I normally, I, uh, for the streams, it's normally dance, beats, um, or just uh, funk. I think, Paul Smith, you've started using Epidemic Sounds now as well, haven't you? You were using Monster Cat, I think. If you're if you're on uh, Twitch, Monster Cat's okay. Monster Cat is okay, but on uh, YouTube, if you don't pay the license, they then copyright claim everything going back. <laughs> Unless you pay the perpetuity license, which is like four hundred quid. Oh, yeah, that's it. Yeah, so Soft House is what I have a lot playing a lot as well. See, Paul Smith is just copying me. <laughs> this is actually the one reason why I hate Jimmy Broadbent and why I think he's a total penis. It's because. He, because he's uh, like one of the most, uh, well, he is the most popular sim racing channel, and he always plays like synthwave stuff and uh, new new disco and stuff, and so now that's become synonymous with him. It bloody annoys me because I like that music, but if I use any if I use any synthwave stuff, you know, <laughs> he's ruined it for everybody that likes synthwave. He, ne he, he needs to mix things up more. <laughs> It's like when a, you know, when a film comes out, you, you know, you might like a certain type of music and a film comes out that uses it and then every bloody film uses that type of music. <laughs> and you're like, and it ruins it. Yeah, I, li I like my own stuff. I like stuff to sound slightly different from other stuff, though. Do you know what I mean? So I've, uh, basically what I'm saying is Paul Smith can't use any soft hats. <laughs> Yeah, he can use whatever he wants. There's a lot of soft. I, I think one of the problems with the uh, new, new, new retro wave and synth wave and stuff is, that, you know, they, the inherent nature of that music is it uses like five different synthesizers, 
and the themes of it are the sort of 1980s pop themes so it all sounds very similar as much as i really enjoy it um there's not that much variation in it due to the nature you know the nature of that genre by by design <laughs> is uh quite limited background theme music it's, it's we've got music playing nice bit of club music a bit of tropical soft house is that better is that a better volume for you ah <laughs> oh, the last um, i haven't heard that uh, do you know where uh, you know yellow the band yellow just released an album last week you, you guys know yellow surely they did that uh, 90, uh, 90s they were really popular if it's loads of car adverts to use yellow <laughs> yeah I've not even heard the new album but I just know they've released one so I'll check that out at some point oh yeah chica chica oh ow ow <laughs> Yeah, yellow are good. Oh, that's a great rear view, isn't it? <laughs> Fantastic. It's not exactly road legal. Well, that's better on the brakes. Oh, they definitely they have improved the braking on this. I I want to get a thirty ninety. <laughs> Oh, you need some tooth and throat singing. Oh, <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, I can't sing two notes at the same time. I haven't got the talent. If anyone wants to join this, by the way, guys, the uh, password is T in capital letters. Does less anti-roll bar make the back come out more? I thought more ARB makes the back more responsive. I always get confused. Nothing is more satisfying than manual analog rotary volume knobs. Yeah, I, I don't know what the most satisfying knobs are. I don't know if we can change the gearing in this car, actually. Come to think of it. That seems to be handling okay. Yeah, I, more makes it stiffer. I thought a stiffer rear makes the back more responsive. Stiffer ARB makes the back come out quicker. Yeah. That's what I thought. Yeah, for most people, a 3080 is fine. And obviously, you're not getting good value for money out of a 3090. I kind of feel like, because I've got the 2080 Ti, it feels to me like the 3080 isn't enough of an upgrade to justify it we'll, we'll have to see when uh, real world benchmarks come out but as it is right now it seems like it might only get like another 10 or so fps whereas the 39 might get 20 25 fps i don't know <laughs> we'll see we'll see stiffer is always more Yeah, well, that's the problem with setups, isn't it? Everything depends on everything else. What What's a rule in one scenario might not be a applicable rule in all scenarios. Does this game have the mechanic from Project Cars 2, or do you have to know... Uh, well, that Project Cars 2, uh, you're on about the crew tip thing. To be honest, it only ever said stuff that was bloody obvious. Like, it, it didn't actually do anything that would really affect your lap time. All right, Mr. Smith. See you later after you've taken your chimney stack down. <laughs> yeah, sounds like a good plan, Stuart. I mean, the thing is, I can't remember. When, when did I buy the 2080 Ti? 
I don't think I even... I, I think maybe, maybe I've had it for like a year. It was when I bought this PC. And when when was it I did that live stream and I couldn't... And the BIOS was broken until I did the Windows install. That would have been when I got it. Yeah. It just, so the thing is, it's just like... Microsoft flight sim. <laughs> At the moment. Oh, they're saying that. Uh, Microsoft Flight Sim does run a bit faster since the last update. And the new updates that are coming out, I think, will improve. So it is getting... Microsoft Flight Sim's getting better. Performance-wise. I, I think a lot of it is code optimization rather than raw... You know, raw grunt that you need on your computer. Nigel smashed me in the face what here. What is the motive behind this demand? Necessity. Necessity for money. Ferris, Ferris Bueller flashback. I was going to give you more, but you just gave me a Ferris Bueller flashback. <laughs> Thank you, man. Thanks, Nigel, for that donation. Appreciate that. What was it? What was the Ferris Bueller flashback? <laughs> Ferris Bueller's day off. VR and I, I'm not the thing is though I don't do that much VR down here on the computer I'd put the uh, 3090 in oh yellow <laughs> um, my VR system's upstairs in my bedroom that's got a 1080 in it and to be honest most VR games run fine with the 1080 if they're designed for VR like Half-Life Alex and what have you they, you know, if a game's designed for VR, it's designed to run at good set, a good frame rate on a 2070 at least, or, or on a, or a 1070. So, and because of the YouTube and the live stream, I don't tend to play driving sims in VR, unfortunately. <laughs> I mean, I would do, but it's just it's just much better for you guys to watch in TD. I'm more comfortable and easier for me to read the chat. Hey, Jonas K. What card can run a Pimax 8 QR? Probably nothing. Probably need like five 3090s. <laughs> oh, well, I mean, oh, well, this is the other thing. The PlayStation 5's coming out, will be coming out as well. I, I, I'm going to have to get a PlayStation 5. Uh, Frivdiz, Kulikwa, Giacomo, top three there. Nice driving. We're filling fill the server up here. Nice one. It's just a uh, six-lap race. See, hopefully, uh, see how the net code goes here. Regards get it. I mean, uh, I need to try and get one for free. <laughs> like a like an annoying YouTuber. Yeah, the new the new cheap the. The small Xbox, yeah. That, that's quite compelling, actually. I mean, it's digital only, but I mean... I've got mixed views on that whole Game Pass thing. Like, there's good aspects to it. I can see how it can work for a lot of people, but then if they keep up in the price on it, which they probably will do, you know, you get locked into these things, which I don't like. I quite like ownership of stuff. Um... Yeah, uh, Tyrant Wim. I think they are planning to uh, implement DLSS and other stuff for x 11. Uh, for x Flight Sim. Um, yeah. DirectX 11 and DirectX 12, I don't think are that much. Well, you've just explained the differences. But I, they're not, like, massively different from a, from a feature set. Necessarily. Maybe moving forwards, there will be more impactful stuff. But I think I think it was DirectX 10 really was the significant jump in terms of the the how the API can utilize the the, the feature set that's in the, in all well the, the graphics cards since like the uh, nine nine ten and twenty series cards that, that that was mostly from what came into DirectX 10. So.
If you've got a PC and Game Pass, you don't need Xbox anymore. Yeah, well, that's that's the thing. That's why I would get a um, PS5, personally. If you, yeah, if you've got... Microsoft are definitely trying to... Whoop, Mr. Stutter. Microsoft are definitely trying to make things more... Um, platform agnostic. Ow. Uh, okay. Well, we got it, but we did kind of reacted to that a bit crazy at first but then it seems to have gone back so we didn't get flipped though which is nice that's what would have happened previously <laughs> we just started streaming Dom maybe I need to I might need to turn my internet down though whoa he's gone I don't know. I think Microsoft's doing a... They've, they've moved the gaming stuff forwards quite a bit. Whoa, contact. That's a nice driving here. Yeah, the cars don't seem to be reacting as crazy from contacts as they used to, which is good, because that was the main reason why I stopped playing this. And the braking's a lot better. So, uh, that's really nice. Yeah, it, de it definitely seems to have improved a lot. I, I, this is what this stream's about, really. I want to try a whole bunch of things out, and then I can do a video on it. I don't know. Uh, well, they've, they've, they've tied together the EA Game Pass, haven't they? But the... Uh, yeah, I mean, in my mind, games consoles and, like, sports games kind of go hand in hand. You know, like FIFA, NHL, NBA. <laughs> that's what game... Con in that, that's, like, prime territory for game consoles. But then EA have destroyed those types of games with all the bollocks they put in them, with all the card trading shit and all the microtransaction crap. So... I don't know. I think one... I, I, I don't know. I, I can see that new cheap Microsoft... Let's say cheap. The 299 Xbox, digital only, with Game Pass. That, I could see being a really compelling option to then make it a box that you put underneath your... Basically, you use it inst instead of getting an Amazon stick or using your TV's shitty... Um, <laughs> your TV's garbage... You know, your TV's app application interface, which is awful... It's always slow. It always doesn't work properly. It's just terrible. You use an Xbox instead, and then it also means you've got like really good games. And you've, and as a family, if you've got Game Pass, you're like, well, look, it's ten quid, and that keeps your kids entertained. And it means, and you, you've got games that you might want to play as well. It, it kind of makes sense rather than having to be forced into that state of, oh, do I buy this game? Do I buy that game? My kid wants this game. You know, hey, random. So I, th I think that 299 Xbox is particularly compelling because I also think the type of people buying a games console could not give a crap about 4K, 8K or 120 FPS or anything. It's like, why would you care about that? If you, Most people are still in the sort of 1080p mindset when it comes to a TV. And most people's TVs are like in the corner of the room, you know? So the, that, that 299 Xbox is really really compelling um yeah i i agree mon lord for me personally i'm just saying for most people they wouldn't notice so i think i think microsoft has done a good strategic choice with that uh that xbox it's just they they really haven't got any uh, as far as we're aware standout launch titles so that that is definitely a problem i think and i think that's where sony <laughs> from a from a gamer's perspective a console gamer's perspective you would go for a, a playstation every day because you're like there's always going to be like those sony exclusives that are just better than microsoft exclusives haven't heard from aris in a while i, I don't know he's probably busy maybe he's having a break who knows 
Hopefully he's alright. This car has nice, uh, this car's turning in just from the steering, which is nice. That's what you typically get from quite a stiff ARB. Well, that's it. I mean, yeah, in terms of the resolution and stuff, I'm, uh, this is the P4, Leonard, uh, Leonard. Um, in terms of resolution, I mean, uh, I guess when I watch Netflix, it's 1080p, because I, I have a projector in my sitting room, a, a, like a five-year-old projector, which is 1080p. But then again, ah, oh, bollocks, I keep doing that. <laughs> Whoops, off-road line. Let's hope there's not an invisible wall here. There isn't. There we go. Um, I watch a lot of, like, 90s TV that's SD, so... <laughs> I'm fine with that. This is the worst rear-view camera in the history of rear-view cameras. I do the Joker lap there, guys. Pretty rad rear view. So, who in chat is buying a games console? And if you are getting a games console, type Xbox or PlayStation 5. Just got a message on my phone then. <laughs> Missed the corner. <laughs> Poly, Poly Mega. Uh, Sega Master System all the way. I, I mean, if you if you're into sim racing and Sims, you're much better off with a PC than a games console always. James Story, yeah, that'd be that'd be interesting. I I think Sony will do a standalone VR device. To be honest, I think that's the way things are going with VR headsets. Don't. <laughs> Yeah, probably. That was probably the message, Zaris. My God. We need to break earlier for that corner. Yeah, I... I, I think I'm going to order a PlayStation 5 off Amazon. I've never bought a console at launch, so I'm looking forward to getting... Uh, <laughs> I'm going to bend over and take it. Get the uh, PS5 at launch. Hopefully. Is it going to launch with the new Gran Turismo? You want to do a... Well, how much money do you want to spend, uh, Twasox? Thing is, like, on console there aren't any, like... We're going to have to wait and see. Always oh, had an accident there in third place. We're going to have to wait and see um, what the next force is like. Because I have a suspicion they're going to try and do something a bit more realistic with it. Because of the... Just because of the nature of esports stuff. There's, there's, there's a lot of money in esports. And Forza and the Xbox is a platform. There's a lot of sort of random corporate backing behind it. Um... And they know that people want to use it, but they know that Forza is just, just, just shit as an esports title. It's just not realistic enough. Um, so, you know, it, it might be, it'll be interesting to see what happens. But yeah, on console, there's no real proper Sims, so you really have to get a PC if you want to do Sims. But that said, in terms of value for money, a, a PC becomes good value for money when you use it as a PC and not just for one thing. Like the whole value of a PC is that it does lots of things. Uh, they're not bringing back Project Gotham because the um, it was made by uh, 
the, the company that, uh, that made it had been completely disbanded. <laughs> like in 2008 or something. <laughs> That's what, And then they, the staff from that then moved to um, Forza and Codemasters and... A lot of people don't realise this. It's quite weird. Like, the British game development industry... You know, a lot of the people that are working for various companies have all worked on other companies' games, so... <laughs> it's quite hard to actually... The different games have different titles, but they're actually being developed by the same people. Oh, I'm sorry, you, your dreams have been removed. Bizarre Creations, that was it. That's who did... Um... Yeah, Microsoft decided to get behind Turn 10 and uh, Forza, and so they basically... They were like... And also, uh, Bizarre didn't really sell... The, that PGR 4, was it? Didn't sell very well. I think what can happen with racing games, I think this partially happened to uh, SMS with Project Cars, is you can have you you, you have a successful racing game like say uh, Project Gotham Racing um, or Forza or something. You have like a really big successful racing game, and it really normally it's on like a new uh, a new gen of console means you can do new graphics or something with a racing game, and it's you know it's spectacular and people are like wow. But then there's not much you can really do to innovate on that for another title that's equally as significant of a jump. <laughs> so so the consumer's like, oh, hang on a minute, why am I bothering to buy this new racing game? I've already got all the cars in the previous racing game. Do you see what I mean? Bloody hell. Like, the innovation has to come from areas that aren't as visually obvious, so from a mass market sense. Uh, per pizza, you should be able to join the next race. Whoa! Oh, race finished. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, that seemed to work pretty good there. That was good, good driving, guys. I enjoyed that. This music's giving me brain tumour. Ow! God, I've got DD wheel. That's not nice. Uh, really, PlayStation 5 will be able to run good sims. It, yeah, in theory it can, uh, but um, yeah, in theory, but it's just about it getting on there. So I think ACC, if they re-release that on the next-gen consoles and do a bit of a polished job on it, could be quite good. But then the thing is, it just doesn't have the content ACC. ACC, the problem with ACC is, outside of what I personally don't like, like from a snob perspective, outside of that... Um, it doesn't have the appeal that something like Forza and GT Sport has. And if you're, if you're releasing to the mass market console audience, you really need to have like a lot of cars or uh, um, missions, objectives, things to unlock, or like a really good structured online system. It's just what the console audience expect. If you don't have that, it's like, well, it's just a generic racer as far as people are concerned. I am drinking, t well, tea and energy drink. <laughs> Archie, even if they bring Sims over to the console, the bulk of the audience will still be on PC. Yeah, well, that, the, the thing is, most people with a console have it in the sitting room. It's not the best place for a sim ring, is it? Uh, Otis B. Driftwood. Uh, ACC does in a way, it just doesn't work very well because they haven't designed it that well. Yeah, no, I, t I totally... I, I think there's a huge gap on console. Um, that's why I think a lot of people were disgruntled about Project Cars 3. I mean, they should just release AMS 2 on console, to be honest. Uh, now, there you go. AMS 2 on the next-gen consoles and previous-gen consoles when it's a bit more polished off. <laughs> Sorted. They'll wrap up the sim market on console. That'd be well reasoning to do that. They're positioned perfectly for that. Um, yeah, because Project Cars 2 is the only... So I describe it as like an AC-like experience in that you've got a game there with a range of cars, range of tracks, um, and it's a simulator. So it's like not necessarily the best simulator, but, you know, realistic. And you can do realistic racing on it. Project Cars 2 is the closest to offer that on console. Nothing else is like that on console. 
So... Uh, I don't know. The AMS2 does have um, uh, quite a few tracks, but yeah, if, I guess if, it'd be nice if they had more of the uh, European tracks as well, yeah. The more the more well-known Formula tracks. By the way, well done. Frivdiz, myself in second. I don't know why. I thought I was third. Uh, Nadi Muk, <laughs> Nad Nads, Killaqua, Paul Cox, Twiflanka. Nice driving. That was good. That was nice racing there. That worked out really nicely. It's a good drive. There was uh, there's good wheel support on cor current consoles. Well, that's also good that the next gen consoles uh, are supporting this gen's console steering wheels because that was really BS. Um, previous gen, uh, PlayStation Two, uh, PlayStation Three wheel and stuff didn't necessarily work on the PlayStation Four, which is bollocks. It's like you've spent 150 quid on a wheel. Oh, I'll just throw it away and buy another one for a ch arbitrary chip. So that's really nice that that. Finally, the console companies have realised that that was dumb. Right, let's change the car here. Um, I'm trusting the bits. I'm going to go for this sprint car because we, uh, we were saying that yesterday. Um, what's this? Iberia. Cascavel. Uh, I, Jonas K, I'll put that in the rotation. We'll do that after this one because I want to do the sprint car. The Fanatec wheels worked on the first PS4, but Sony blocked it afterwards. You, you, uh, oh, right, I get you. And then they unblocked it again. Oh, okay. The What was it? The, the uh, Porsche wheel and the Elite that worked on the Xbox 360. What is the motive behind this demand? Necessity. Necessity for money. I'm not supplying money for money necessities. A uh, Cascable, P3 next smiling face uh, with hearts. A uh, Cascable. Uh. I'll do it after this this race. I'll do an Alton Park here. <laughs> Thanks for donation there. Remind me after this race and we'll do what you just suggested because you bribed me and I'm corrupt. <laughs> I need to double check for car numbers as well. Right, can people get into this server? Oh, it might be full now. Oh, shit, I need to make qualifying. I'm going to have to make a new server here because you can't adjust this when you're in the session, as far as I'm aware. Well, that's a better view. Yeah, and it, you, in Project Cars 2, you could change this, so I don't know why. I need to tell Reza about this because they, they could probably make this changeable. Make, make a new session. It sold out for two dollars, yeah. Pretty much. Christopher France, here's a question. Where's the marketing from all these third party flight sim companies? Uh, what what do you mean? I don't know what you mean. There is no marketing from them. It Microsoft market for them, if that's what it is. <laughs> they, they don't have they don't do any marketing, they just hope on that there's just flight sim forums. Oh, I have to do this again. Oh, well. Sorry for those of you that got in and then might not get in now. Sorry about that. It's quick game of muscle 2. Password is T. Uh, yeah, I'm going to make qualifying short and then it'll be fine to keep the same. Just make it 15 minutes. That's right, isn't it, I think. I hope. <laughs> Okay, we'll try. We'll, uh, F three is in this game. I'll give it a go. Uh, it seems like it might be now, Lucas. Yeah, it, it definitely seems to have passed a threshold now where it's um, much more um, rounded and polished from when I last played it. Like the net code seems to be working a lot better now. We did have a little bit of a contact last race, but it didn't do anything crazy, and the cars didn't flip over and drive on top of each other's heads and things. So. Struggling with 70s F1 cars. Yeah, they, they are tricky. Like, you have to drive them really different to how you drive other vehicles, like, really preemptively. So, I mean, they're hard in anything. They're hard in, even in AC, which is, and R-Factor 2. <laughs> you really have to drive them, build up slowly. You have to drive them like a tarmac rally. Coffee's not kicked in. <laughs> 
Um, Mono Lord, all right. Thanks for popping in, man. Have a nice uh, afternoon, day, morning, evening, wherever you are. <laughs> Best ballista. Right, let's get driving here. Alton Park, six laps. Sprint race. So these basically uh, like a like a, a Renault Megan. Renault. Twox, you grew up with consoles starting with the NES, so I love them, and PC seems like a bit of a headache. Um, yeah, n yeah, no. Like, not since Windows 10, to be honest. And Steam. Like, PCs are as much as a headache that you make them. T to be honest, as someone... I've, I've had an Xbox 360. I never had an Xbox One. I've got a PlayStation 4. Uh, you know, I've always used PCs as well. If you're using Steam, six lap race. If you're using Steam, there's no real headaches, to be honest. Like, um, it's like once if you've got an, uh, you get an okay piece. Like, let's say you spend a thousand dollars on a PC. Well, you don't even spend that. You could probably spend like, because the new the twenty series graphics cards are actually the thirty series graphics cards are actually dropped price again. You could spend. Eight hundred and fifty dollars on a PC. Um, get like a G twenty nine T three hundred whatever steering wheel. Buy your games through Steam. You're not likely to have problem. Like genuinely, you really don't need to fiddle. Like there's the thing with the PS four I noticed is it's slow to update. It's not necessarily hard to use or anything. It doesn't really break or anything. <laughs> you have to update all the time with the GT Sport at least that's why I tend to play on it and just slow loading times and things the PCs really aren't hard to use anymore I think that was that was the case before Windows 7 basically um, I mean I'm, my set, my setup is I'm, I'm running two PCs here I'm running four monitors like my setup is mental and it it actually works pretty consistently now, apart from cable issues. That's that's more me having cheap cables. Oh, I'm sorry, James, ruined your life. I hope you bought your PC through my Amazon affiliate link, otherwise you're banned. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, the nice thing with PC is well, well things don't seem to break on them anymore as well which is like hardware is really strong uh, like stable now back in the back in the day you know like your modem would break or your sound card would break or there'd be like a weird driver problem with the motherboard like that just doesn't really happen now laptops are still shit but pc like pcs i think are fine Does it, listen to that <laughs> it's cool cool sound No LSD on this. Yeah, I really like the Xbox 360. I would say the Xbox 360 was... Uh, uh, the Xbox 360 was like the... Uh, was like, well, apart from the Red Ring of Death stuff, the second gen Xbox 360, where they, 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 made, they fixed the Red Ring of Death issues, um, I think that was like this sweet spot for game consoles. The most enjoyment I ever had on a games console was the Super Nintendo. I really like Super Nintendo, the Dreamcast. Uh, I know PlayStation 2 was probably the best ever games console, let's, let's be real, in terms of everything. But the Xbox 360, playing Battlefield 1943, Call of Duty, uh, the, the general online of it, how streamlined it was. It was, it was just good. But yeah, PC now. PC is where it's at. All the hot women are on PC, let's be real. What do you mean you can't say motherboard anymore? The, the term mother is not... <laughs> it's not to do with... Lang that mother is to do with mother and child in terms of cate category... Ca categorization, not sexuality. <laughs> people, people are going to use language how they decide to use language. Parent board. <laughs> Sod off. It's not a parent, is it? It's, it's the mother. 
of the child. Catag it's just semantics. This is what's weird, is you can't... I know you guys are taking the piss in chat, but, like... It's, it could be any word. It could be like the flangipan. <laughs> or the nobble lobble. Or the gibble gob. It doesn't matter. It's just a word to describe a hierarchical structure. Sure, it's a word that's used in the context of um, like biological parenting. But who gives a shit? <laughs> There's a discussion about it. Wow. Tough shit. Bit like someone that's going to get offended by uh, semantics to that extent, they should just be gassed. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't feel uh, I don't feel like masculated or emasculated by the fact that. Uh, um, a motherboard's called a motherboard. It, it doesn't make me feel like less of a... That, that I would be worse at caring for children because I can't be called a mother. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's... <laughs> it, doesn't even, it doesn't even make logical sense. Like, fathering and mothering... It, it doesn't matter. Like, <laughs> don't even. Ah, oh, whatever. I, th I think. I think what the internet has done is it's allowed people that uh, are brain dead to voice their views. Just have to ignore the brain dead people. Concentrate on the people that aren't brain dead. Yeah, subboard's called a daughter board. If anything, you know, from the perspective of being like the like SJW in on this kind of thing, surely the fact that a piece of technology is called a daughter board doesn't that doesn't that inherently suggest gem gender neutrality or or um, not gender neutrality, but wouldn't it suggest um, it would suggest uh, females could be inherently related to technology as much as males? So wouldn't that be like progress? from a, some angles of SJW fighting. <laughs> Woke board. Ah, <laughs> oh, well, you know. The CPU's the baby. My CPU's the daddy. <laughs> and his car's... <laughs> his car's an active... active beast. Ah, oh dear. Whoa! Whoa! Okay. Ain't no recovering that. Yeah, we need to get rid of RGB on the motherboards. I mean, print rainbows on them by all means, but I don't understand the whole LED light thing <laughs> on everything. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm more of a utilitarian when it comes to my computer components. I haven't used VR recently, uh, but it's more because of just live streaming and stuff. I do really like VR. It's just not practical for what I do. Stripes in a race car. Wow, blue underfloor lighting. That's the pinnacle. I tell you what I did like, though. You, do you remember when uh, when they first started printing, like, um, graphics cards on, like, blue circuit boards and stuff? I really like that. I had an Albatross... Albatron... Uh, GeForce 40i. Um, and that looked amazing. I had, like, a silver heatsink. They probably did nothing. <laughs> with a fan on it and then the PCB was blue and you just get like red PCBs as well hello midlife crisis 
I like blue PCBs. I think I think they look cool. Uh, well, yeah. If if they send me a reverb, I'll review it. Ah, oh, bollocks. <laughs> that was totally my fault there. Yeah, T1's organ on this because you're already the car's already under load, and then you put more brake on, and it wants to lose. Uh, not right now. Midlife crisis. Shadow realmed. I might get a thirty ninety. Chris Bow is loaded into the wrong account again. What a noob. Uh, I don't think it is. So I don't think it's liberals or left wing or right wing people that are these idiots on the internet. I think what it is is that there are super vocal minority of extreme people on the far left and the far right or far whatever. I don't, don't matter what category. There's basically just a bunch of complete tits on the internet and what happens is when making an argument people tend to jump towards the far extreme uh to, to try and to try and make that argument they they jump to like the mental extreme uh, as, as a way to to argue and so these voices on the extremes uh these total tits get magnified and that's what you end up hearing so as a result it appears in reality that everyone's divisive and everything's so extreme and everyone disagrees with you know you're either like a someone that thinks all colored people should be executed or whatever or, you, or you're someone that thinks that um you can't use n names for like or everyone's gonna be offended by whatever you do, do you know what i mean it's like you're either like a full-on fascist total nazi or or, or you're a I don't know what the opposite would be, but you know what I mean. Ironically, actually, the extremes tend to both be kind of fascist. So that's probably the bad example. In reality, I don't think anyone or the vast majority of people are not at those extremes. In fact, almost apart from the tits on the internet. <laughs> most people are not like, like, don't even think like that. Uh, well, the, the uh, gender segregation thing in sports is, like, interesting in a sense. Because I think it highlights the issue with sports <laughs> innately. So, if you want sport to be fair in totality, you have to divide things up almost indefinitely. And it kind of also highlights that the best people at a sport, at any sport are going to be pre genetically predefined to be best. Um, you know, that, which is why when you look at, you know, look at basketball, it's predominantly very tall people. You look at jockeys, it's predominantly very small people. <laughs> you look at uh, gy gymnastics, it'll be people that are genetically good at lifting other people and doing these kind of moves. Do you know what I mean? It's like, look at rock climbing, it's typically people that are flexible or you, you, you know so if you want to actually make sport fair sport is like hyper uh, top level athleticism to the degree that we we sort of um, promote it it's kind of absurd to, to celebrate someone for effectively being genetically almost genetically predefined to be that 0.0001% best human in the world <laughs> at whatever arbitrary action like you should just celebrate participation basically I'm just bitter that it's not bold categories that's all um, oh, even even, so even with non-physical sports there are genetic uh, reasons why people might be predefined to be better at certain sports or not even necessarily genetic, like general cultural reasons. There might, there might be positive or negative cultural reasons. 
you know, I mean, if you, for example, if you grow up in uh, Asian countries, you're much more likely to be um, culturally aware of uh, Go as a board game as opposed to uh, poker, I guess. Uh, or I don't know, whatever would be a, a European Western uh, chess, maybe. So you're much more likely to, to be familiar with Go as a, as a tactical board game from from Asian cultures, uh, uh, Japan, China, what have you, than, than uh, you you would be if you grew up in, in European America Western culture. So it's much more likely that the world's best Go players are going to be Asian. <laughs> Just, you know, and much more likely for chess players that they, they would be uh, Western for various cultural reasons. You know, negative or positive. I mean, it's just an arbitrary game either way. Ah, uh, Hungry Hippos. Oh, I'm, I'm proper... I'm shit hot at that. <laughs> well, that is weird, isn't it? That some games and sports get, like, se culturally celebrated as if they're, like better or more valuable than others like there's no reason why hungry hip why well, it's necess not necessarily the most high skill ceiling game but there's no reason that we get obsessed with one thing over another thing really they're, they're all stupid activities yeah I, I think the real the real thing the real issue is someone saying that X category of people can't do something is the problem that's where it's an issue when so when someone says oh you're not allowed to do gymnastics because you're because you're male or oh you, you're not allowed to you're not allowed to do um, esports because you're because you're female or, or you might have like um, a matriarchy dominated area that maybe not by intention but by general nature and culture is exclusionary to a, to uh, masculine or, or vice versa, so you know that's where it gets complicated. Favorite takeaway food? I don't know. I don't really get takeaway food to be honest. I think if I do, if I do, it'll be like um, curries, uh, ne Nepalese curries. <laughs> Yeah, no, so I, I was looking at, uh, so this stuff like, if, if you want to encourage specific demographics into a certain area where there where there's um, a, a non-even distribution, uh, I, I mean, you might have some areas where you wouldn't expect an even distribution of certain categories anyway, but if, if you have something where it seems like it's uh, unevenly distributed because of uh, his, historical cultural norms and you want to change that because it's probably beneficial for most people, it seems to be it does seem to be constructive to do uh focus things with the demographic that you want to then bring into it so for example in the police force if you have an area in the police force where you're like um oh, results here drew force tom very secret nice nice top three there um sit in the police force for like a town you might have a uh, a low minor a minority of people that were like, let's say um just a group, I don't know, um, whatever, just pick, pick a group, like Indians, for example. You've got a town, and there's <laughs> a minority of Indians that just happen to live in that town. It's a western town, there's less Indians there than there are uh, non-Indians. It makes sense for the nature of how a police force operates to in some ways artificially employ an Indian, even if statistically it, you know, it would be less likely to happen through basic employment process it will end up with a more uh, equal and representative police force for that community. So there's this scenarios where it actually makes sense to artificially move things forwards and progress things. It actually makes things better. But there is a it's a hard it's, it's a hard balance to get it right in a way that's not exclusionary and doesn't end up being divisive. How many laps are you on? Six laps. We're all good. So easy to click exit there. <laughs> when I was quite young, my grand got me a board game called Hijack. 
<laughs> you couldn't release that now. That sounds like a really good game, though. You'll probably find it on the internet. Bob Mortimer, I don't know. Oh, but I... Whoa, they've... <laughs> Murder! Oh, that's good. Look at that. So they had a good car contact there and nothing crazy happened. So, yeah, it looks like the Netco stuff might be fixed. Nice. Oh, bloody hell. This car's like a bouncy castle over that. Yeah, I'm not saying that police recruitment is <laughs> necessarily perfect. Uh, I was just giving a hypothetical example of where I think... <laughs> Gotta be careful on your brakes there. Well, an example of where I think it can... Um, where positive discrimination can end up being a positive. It's not necessarily but de facto a negative. But it's a difficult thing to get right, for sure. But the thing is, it's not actually even about... Um, with policing, like, you don't even need to talk about different uh, races or agendas or anything. It's more like you need, what the key is for a, if you have a police force governing, uh, governing or uh, enforcing law for a specific area, you need to make sure that that police force is constructed from a representative group of that area. So that would include economic, uh, geographic. So, you know, you'd want someone in the police force that was from like the council estate. You'd want someone from the police force that's from the elite business sector. You'd want someone that's from a, a middle class area. Do you know what I mean? That That's what you need. You, you need a... For policing, you'd need a representative police force and you'd... You would then also... Yeah, it's complicated because obviously you'd be like, but you need people that are good at policing. And the people that are good at policing might not always be from the different representative groups. So you then have to have training in place. Yeah, it gets very complicated. I, d I don't know what that is, Tyrant Worm. I'm in the UK, yeah. I'm slowing this car. These guys are too bloody quick. What are they doing? <laughs> it's buggers. Go. Yeah, two, well, you would hope two socks at the court system would have protections there, but that's not always the case, is it? I mean, it's okay in the UK we don't have any police anyway because they've, <laughs> they've all been sacked due to having no budget. So he's kind of moot either way. Uh, America's so America's better than the UK if you're rich if you own one or two properties and you maybe have an income of over 100 uh, let's say $150,000 a year and maybe a household income of over $250,000 then America's probably from an individual perspective probably better than the UK if you if you don't fully own a property or you're just paying a you just got a single property um and you earn under uh, like a hundred thousand, then the UK is probably quality of life is probably better than America. To be honest, um, I think most of Germany's quality. Uh, Germany, most of a lot of Europe, Western Europe, Germany, France, Belgium, Holland, Sweden, Norway. Um, I think quality of life for anyone earning under 50... Uh, anyone with a household income under 60,000. Oh, I just... <laughs> sorry, just killed him. I don't know how I did that. It was interesting. I, yeah, I think quality of life in those countries is better for that, that category. Yeah, obviously, if you, for sure, if you're rich, you're going to have good quality of life. I'm saying if you're rich, America's probably one of the best countries to be rich in.
you have more freedom in America if you're if you're rich than you do in other countries. And you can have a plot of land in the middle of nowhere. America's probably the most libertarian country at the moment for, uh, for rich people. <laughs> wow, very secret. I think he's serving a penalty. Save you from the USA. <laughs> Tiger King style. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, with them, uh, as I always say, America is a massive country, and each state in America is very different. So, it's can't, you can't really say America as a singular. Like, I mean, I guess like Scotland now is <laughs> probably going to separate separate off from uh, from UK, but um, in general, most UK is much all the different regions of the UK are much more similar to each other than the different states in America are. Like, America really doesn't mean one thing, does it? I mean, uh, let's be real. The problem with America is that they didn't accept British rule. That, <laughs> that's where it went wrong. <laughs> when they started throwing tea in the ocean, that's when they went too far. They deserve what comes to them. Why am I not get the uh, HUDs not saved here? You, you can't just you can't throw tea in the ocean and think that that's all right. I adjusted the HUD last last session, and now it's not showing like race position and stuff. That was a Project Cars two bug. See heritage there. Madness engine heritage. Ow. Ah, uh, maybe. Hello, guys. <laughs> Yoink. Take those two places there. Yeah, definitely. I think all Americans should have to buy British people a box of tea every year. I think that's fair. I don't think that's... You know, a box of tea is only a few quid. I, I, I might add up to billions if you... What is going on with this car and the throttle there? Great. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it might add up to billions, but I think it's fair. I, I don't think that's a, a, an unjust demand. Tea bricks. Tea bags hadn't been invented. Oh, imagine building a house out of tea bricks. Just get over it. That's not something that I'm going to... That's like saying get over genocide. You know, that's the kind of thing that a, a, a pesky American would say. You don't get over throwing tea in the sea. Eric Takusla, I'm thinking of buying a racing wheel. My budget is four hundred dollars. 
Do you mean like a you you want like a a wheel base? Uh, so like uh, four hundred dollars, probably T three hundred is going to be the best you'll get for four hundred dollars. Thrustmaster T three hundred. If you could stretch to like five fifty dollars, you could uh, get a Fanatec CSL Elite with the with those pedals. But yeah, t if you're absolutely brand new to sim racing, just get a T three hundred. Yeah, because you don't know if you like if you want to ruin your entire life with sim racing yet. Whoa! Here we go. Who's this? It'd be nice to know, but the graphics not on the screen, so. He's done what I did there. As you go over a bump on that corner, it's enough to put the car over the limit. Uh, Jacques de Plesis. Maybe you need to click the bell. Did you... Uh, maybe you need to build that uh, pentagram triangle with candles. That helps. <laughs> well, you know, it's pretty serious. Throwing tea in the ocean. Tea doesn't just grow on trees. Uh oh. <laughs> oh, we got ninth place after our spin. Tenth place, apparently. Nice driving there. The bell is rising. Well, I need a, I need a biscuit here. It's ginger nut time. Oh yeah, hey, full full switch for that. That was all right. That was quite a good race there. So it could do with it. The car has a quite on-off grip. This. Could do with a little bit more um, controllable slip with it. Would make it a bit more fun to drive. But, you know, that's just how it is. Just wait for the session to finish. I'll give us a scoreboard. Uh, it's a lot better, uh, Jack. A lot more polished. A lot of the uh, the general approach thing seems better. Yeah, I'll still be going, CB. It's, going up. it's all right, actually, this. Yeah. Seems to be at a point now where I'd, I'd recommend people to buy it. That are sort of more on the fence, people. Um, Leonard Cochola, reducing the brake pressure seems to help a ton. The car seems to be very um, sensitive to the brakes. I do like green tea, but I don't drink it that much. I've got a lot of it in my cupboard. I tend to only have green tea as like a special occasion thing. I need to drink more of it, but I forget because I just I always go for the default uh, Liddles Gold Blend <laughs> tea bag. Like it's a subconscious process now. Go to the kitchen, and uh, I go to the kitchen and uh, like I don't even, I'm not even aware of it. I'm like in a fugue tea baking state. Before I know it, there's a cup of tea in my hand. I didn't know what happened. I could I could literally make a cup of tea with my eyes closed. I just wake up and there's a cup of tea there. <laughs> I'm missing loads of chat messages here. I think Billy Strange popped in. You know what happens when that happens. <laughs> <laughs> there he goes. <laughs> Billy the whale. <laughs> Dirt car Billy. I've never smoked tea leaves, no. Well done to Drew, Drew uh, Face for winning that. Cheated, obviously. Tom, is that Tom the Dentist? Is that sodding Tom the Dentist? Better not be Tom the Dentist. He, he stalks me. <laughs> if it's Tom the Dentist, come in the chat and announce yourself, because this is bollocks if it is. <laughs> Jacrio in third, TVDG fourth, very secret fifth, Killer Qua sixth, and Michael H seventh. Right. Turn to lobby. What did uh, P 
someone donated. Jan Janice K donated for a different car. He wanted the P4, I think. Or is it the P3? Joan asked Kay, what did you want, man? Cast Gavel, P3. Um. Okay. There you go. Let's go for this one. We have lobbying. <laughs> yeah, I've been lobbied. We're lobby. We're being lobbied whilst we're in the lobby. Hey, Rins. Hello, uh, Blade Wolf Kagayo. I'm all right. Yeah, good. Got biscuits and tea. I could be in a plane that's plummeting towards the ground and I'd be like, that's pretty shit. But if I had a biscuit and a nice cup of tea, things could be worse. Right, let's get the fuel out here. We're going to have to start getting into the setup shenanigans with this because these bloody aero boys that always cheat. There's no LSD settings on this one. Oh, we do. We have a clutch LSD. Now, I can never remember which way is which. <laughs> I can remember. No. We want it. The, the, the higher the newton meters. Oh, he's getting confused by this. I can't remember if we want it lower or higher. <laughs> We're like three types of limited slip differentials on this. We've got like multiple clutches. Bloody hell. It's never ending LSD settings. If you want... If you want more... Turning off the power... Normally... The lower, the lower it is, the uh, the more turning you get. But yeah, the more locked the diff is, the less the car wants to rotate. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Let's keep on the defaults now. See how it drives. I mean, I can cope with like one LS, one one diff setting, but not like five. I'm not a sodding engineer. Have I ever driven this track before? Oh yeah, this is like Shugo Reverse. <laughs> I remember this track. Oh, one safe pit exit. Look at this. This this part of the track is exactly like the end of driving Shugo in reverse. It's identical. Well, we'll learn it. You got we we can try these things out. Well, that, now it's now it's its own track, but that whole first section is shoe going reverse. Hello, William Hitchens. The, the thing you want to avoid, like you want as much oversteer as possible, uh, but you don't want snap oversteer. So you, you want the car to turn in as much as possible within the usable grip. Basically, so you don't want to go over the grip threshold so quickly that you can't play with it. 
Whoa! Exposioni. Basically, you want every car to drive like a Porsche because they know how to build good cars. Z4? I need to get my HUD sorted out here. I don't know why it's not displaying the full... This track is brought to you by Chevrolet. It's, this track's in Brazil, right? Force feedback. Is that just wheel rotation? Ro wheel rotation issue. Receive. Thanks, Philip Nolan, for subscribing. It's quite a nice track, actually. It's like a. Not a hard track to learn. It's relatively sim simple corners. I <laughs> push a wheel to the right, cause that's weird. I've not, fortunately, not had that happen to me. Imagine if you had a DD wheel on maximum <laughs> maximum strength, and that happens. It's not gonna be a happy time. I don't really follow F1 that much, you know. I need to make my uh, steering a lot more sensitive. I, I don't know about you guys in chat, but I, I, I prefer the car to be <laughs> overly pointy. I, I, I don't know if it's because I've learned how to sim race with like low end. Like I learned with a Momo Black and a G25. A G25 has 900 degrees of lock, but it, with lower end force feedback wheels, it's better to run. It's easier, rather, to catch cars and drive with uh, faster steering. <laughs> so that's how I've learned how to sim race. Apparently, the uh, Tesla Model S has really, in real life, has really sensitive steering that a lot of people really don't like. I think American cars, in general, tend to have much more sensitive steering because I think American roads are mostly straight. So you think it should be the opposite way around? I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I just like really responsive steering from the steering input and then just move my hands less. I'm lazy. Yeah, I like loose cars. Loose cars with very responsive steering. Feel That, gives, that makes me feel like I'm mostly in control. Well, in America, even the towns are all, are all like straight, mostly. <laughs> Compared to UK, our, our roads in the UK are just like someone threw spaghetti and then traced over it and thought, "That's a good plan." Sp spaghetti roads are us. Italian road planning. Hey, uh, I spilled my spaghetti on the floor. And now I plan the UK and the road the system. Mamma mia. The floaty slip. Late corner understeer is in all madness engine games. Unless you get on the throttle early. Keep your foot on the brake and put a bit of throttle on, fixes it. <laughs> it seems to me like there's some like fundamental weird diff setting a weird it's a weird thing i 
I used to play Wipeout 40 degree lock. I can't remember how I played Wipeout. With the Xbox controller. Make it tight. They let the horses roam too much. Oh, I need another cup of tea. I need a I need like a tea dispenser for the sim rig <laughs> that just drops tea on me. Oh, actually, I need to fix the HUD. So why is that? Why does that like that's a weird thing? It doesn't save it. T muscle. Turn the front tire pressure up. Uh, I'm all right with how this is now. <laughs> um, well, I say that I'm in 18. I've got a hub button mapped. It just wasn't displaying that when I cycle through to it. I just need to not be a noob. Oh, hang on. Ah, oh, the steering rotation is the opposite way around in this. <laughs> the higher the steering lock, the more sensitive it is. I think. Why, why can't that be the same in every game? Yeah, there we go. I didn't cut the pit. Shut up. <laughs> See, arbitrarily, the opposite to Project Cut. Why? And then why is uh, it R Factor 2? It's like R Factor 2 now. <laughs> At least it's there as an option. It's not even an option in AC. In ACC, what is it? Higher is... Higher is less sensitive in ACC. Bloody hell. They've got a really uh, shit-up marshal that's waiting just to penalise you. You touch the line, you bastard. <laughs> that's a penalty. Ah, oh, he's like <laughs> Hitler Whiting. Got his... <laughs> hey, Antoine, how's it going, man? The French man appears in chat. Bonjour. Oh. Uh -huh. I have uh, seen the game of Marcel. He's uh, driving a car that uh, looks a bit like uh, Radical. I will join on the server and I will destroy his silly English face. Ah ha ha. You English pig dog. Beef man. <laughs> you drive like a cow. I will use my baguette, and I will kill you. And then I will retreat away into my into my maison in the countryside. You will not catch me. I will be eating my saucisson with my fromage. <laughs> I fart your intake pipe direction. Oh la la. <laughs> But first, I will drink. He's got German. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> I. You thought I was French, but I'm actually German. <laughs> and now I will drink my beer. <laughs> French to German transition. <laughs> foot to mouth. Foot to mouth driving style. I'm throwing burning carcasses of cows out the back of my car to distract him. I cannot eat your beef. It is contaminated. I want my beef tartar, but your tartar is full of... <laughs> full of the disgusting disease. <laughs> How is German originally... Don't you know the... Uh, the many Indian Germans. 
Lots of Indian German. And they probably are, actually. Saying that, I've never seen an Indian in Germany. Well, turns out I can't drive this for shit. Are other people doing, like, setup stuff here? Are we being aeroboid? Why is he now... Oh, I've read that already. I was pissing by my door, passing, when I heard two shots. You are holding in your hand a smoking goon. You are clearly the guilty party. What, what are you on about? <laughs> Stop drinking, man. 50-50 French-German ancestry. Do you have a French-German accent? Do you like eating cheese with fine German beer? I feel like I'm being aeroboid. Look, Tom the dentist. Maybe we could do we could do some has this got setup sharing in it? No. Come on, Reza. Pop that back in the game. You can do it. We might have to get some might have to do some lock setups racing. Actually, if that's an option, that could be quite good. I don't know if you if it is an option in this, the fixed setup stuff. We might have to start doing that. It's the only way to destroy these aero, aero boys. <laughs> Can't trust these people. Can't change any of this. You can do fixed setups, I believe, but they might lock stuff that you want to change that doesn't affect speed, which is annoying. <laughs> exactly, Gregs. You've, you've worked it out. <laughs> Basically, if you beat me in a way that's perfectly allowed in the game, uh, that's cheating. <laughs> it's like it's like complaining about people using the P90 in Counter Strike. I I, I I love doing that. I love using the P90 in Counter Strike and having people going, "Ah, oh, you're a P90 noob," and I'm like, I'm using something that's in the game as a tool to win the game. I mean, you should know better. Ah, oh, is that Tom the Dent? Get out! Can we get a ban on this guy? It's like a... <sighs> Tom Fried is Drew Face. Top three there. They're banned from the next race. <laughs> the better not have better game. Oh, th there's no better gaming chair than this. This is an authentic Sparco R33 seat. This chair costs like 500 quid. I didn't pay that for it, but, you know, come on. <laughs> this is the ultimate. It is literally a car seat. It's not some f knockoff. I've got the best gaming chair. <laughs> I've been, in other words, I've been financially exploited the most by Sparco. It's not really paid off, has it? Oh, well. It's not paid to win. Gamer show off muscle. <laughs> Ah, oh, 62k subs. It's a lot of submarines. Oh, do you guys want to click the like button? Some interaction for you. Wow. It is. It is a. This is a car. This is a Sparco seat for a real car. Yeah. I mean, it's not being used in a real car. Extra kudos goes to real seats. Yeah, you know, all the gear and no idea. That's what I'm going for. I don't care. You have fun, that's all that matters. <laughs> the hacks. Chair hack. Here we go, guys. Starting at the back here. Let's see what carnage we can avoid. I'm happy with the top seven finish. Hello, McGroove Mavoo. He got a way better start. How is he getting that? That's Aero Boy in. Up the inside. Oh, yeah, they got lower downforce, I guess, because look at that through that corner. Glued. Gorilla glue wheels. Whoa, they've contacted. Oh, man. 
Moses off Simrig. He needs to qualify. Whoops. <laughs> Nearly drove into the back of him then. Who is it? Madrat. There you go. I can see the names of people. Madrat and Eka. There you go. The names back. I just take the names off the cars because it's uh, it looks crap. To bind a button for that. After this race, can someone remind me to uh, bind a button to turn the names off? Ah, uh, I think yeah. I was losing a lot. I was breaking on this corner. I didn't need to. <laughs> I think you could just stay flat out through there. Maybe a tiny bit of a lift. A oh, nice little uh, sound for the... Oh, no, that's my fault! Ah, <laughs> uh, I mean... I couldn't do anything then at the point where my car was slight... Ah, oh, bollocks me ass. Ah... <laughs> uh... I was expecting the car to grip and it didn't. I couldn't do anything. He got away with it. I was going... I mean, I, I, I didn't do anything necessarily wrong until it was too late there. I was on the inside and uh, I couldn't do anything. I, I'd gone in too much so that the back would lose it. I would have spun either way. <laughs> actually swerved across the track and that was after I'm not used to the nature of these cars on the uh, midpoint of corners yeah I don't know why they have that glass smashing sound effect because it's a bit weird basically in this when you get on the throttle, the car rotates way more than other simulators, so you have to be very careful on the throttle. But you also have to use the throttle to get the car to actually turn in through the corners whilst being aware of that sensitivity. So once you've got that ingrained, it's all right. I haven't got it ingrained yet. <laughs> so if you're driving near me, watch out, because I'm probably going to drive into you. Let's go stone cold steed off in smashing things up. Was it your fault? Oh, why, because you were too close to me? <laughs> you... I was going to lose control anyway on the inside of the corner. I would have spun regardless. Oh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I was understeering off into you, though. So it's hard to tell with this. Like, it's hard to tell when... It, so what happens with this is that you've got late corner understeer. Which is very different to other simulators. <laughs> But it's if you're off... Like, it's these off-camber corners that's very sensitive to it. Uh, Jeff, it depends on the quality of the track model. It's entirely down to the modellers. So you can have non-laser scan tracks that are every bit as detailed as laser scan tracks. But yeah, are, are, in general, if it's laser scanned, it will be... It tends to be better. It's a, even a laser scan track is still hand-modelled. It's just you've got a very high resolution reference, basically. But yeah, there, there is like this weird, there, there's a myth that people are like, oh, if it's not laser scanned, it's shit. Which isn't, it's definitely not the case. There's loads of mod tracks for AC that aren't laser scanned that, that are every bit as good as laser scan tracks. Uh, yeah, that's true, Jeff, but you can model them by hand anyway. And even when a track's laser scanned, the track modellers still have to model those details in. It's just that they know that they're there because they've 
got the de they got the data there. So if you're if you're a shit hot track modeler and you know what a track is actually like from good reference, then uh, you can model in those details anyway without a laser scan. So yeah, in general, if a track is based on laser scan data, it's it's a good way to make everything uniform and it probably will be better. But a track doesn't have to be laser scanned to still be very good quality. If that makes sense. I think there's a misconsensus with laser scan tracks as well, where people, uh, a lot of people are like, oh, it's laser scanned, so that means that it's laser data that you're driving on, like, like the track is built by the lasers, not that it's still gone over by artists that make it actually, uh, make the actual track on top of the laser scan data. Uh, typically, uh, the references for a track would be like photographs, uh, GPS data, sat, uh, sat, satellite data, you know, and then laser data. No, the, ra the race room tracks as well aren't this, uh, necessarily the highest detail though either. I'm just, like, there's some mod tracks for AC that you would not know that they weren't laser scanned. Like, they, they were, they're really good. Hang on a minute. When we finish that race, we get this external view. When we finish the last one, we didn't. And I haven't changed any settings. <laughs> Artists with lasers. Get, ban them all. <laughs> Look at that. Killer Qua, Tom, Tom and Drew face. <laughs> Top three there. Nice one, guys. Right. I, I think I might try a slower car next. I've got to learn the physics of this. The worst thing is, you learn Project Cars 2 or uh, Madness Engine. I mean, this is even different from Project Cars 2. So you, <laughs> you learn how to like get the most out of this, and then you then go to AC, and you're like... <laughs> Do, 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 do. Yeah, Jean-Michel Jarre's always uh, worked for Kunos. Right, here we go. Return to the lobby centre. I need to make a fresh cup of tea as well. I'm going to sacrifice some viewers for a cup of tea. That's my cup of tea first. Um, hot cars. <laughs> That's kind of a Brazilian thing there. It's a hot car. Is that meant to be like hot rod? GT oh, this car's terrible. I'm not driving that. I F3. Someone wanted to. We'll see if that's changed because that was annoying last time. Well, I don't want to start the server preemptively because um, I want enough time to quali. Um, I would do Imola. There it is. Couldn't find it. Hot cars. <laughs> it just sounds stupid. Oh, we got the bus stop there. And there. Are there any slots in the server we fall? Right, I'm just getting a cup of tea. You guys can enjoy the uh, the lobby screen. It's one of your hobbies. I'll be back in a second. Tea time. I'll leave you with some nice upbeat dance music. Welcome to DJ Muscle. Put your hands in the air, 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 put your hands in the air. Don't put your hands in the air. Put your hands in the air, 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 put your hands in the air. Don't put your hands in the air. I don't know where that song's going. I've got my DJ license revoked again.
Oh, hello. I hope your hands aren't still in the air. <sighs> Servers up. There you go. We all are we raving. Automobilista two. Two, 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 two. We're going sim racing. We're going sim racing. Sim sim racing. Sim racing. Automobile. Right, enough of that. Enough of that. That was the Automobile to two remix. Not my kind of music. <laughs> I don't think it's anyone's kind of music. That's the beauty. Uh, many laps. Well, ah, oh, no, it's gonna be set up bananas here. T in capital letters. Uh, it's. I think the server's full. That's why it's not displaying. Is my field of view too high? I think my field of view might be too high. The password is T. But uh, service full, so. Mini Ninja. Bloody hell. Can't even have any brakes. <laughs> What's going on? It's trying to make sense. Maybe it's because the tyres are cold. Warm up them wheels. Good. There you go, I've got warm wheels now. I'm trying to work this car out. It's, it feels a little bit a little bit dislocated. Oh. <laughs> oh look at the crowd! Social distancing not happening there.
discom discomfobobulated. It's hard to know the exact point of where the tyres bite. Is that a track cut? <laughs> Certainly looked like a track cut from my perspective. Get a laser stonk lap in here. Can't have Tom beating us. But well, this car is controllable. It's just, it's, it's, uh, it's. Kind of understeer, late corner understeer, <laughs> and then there's that on the accelerator. The back wants to come out, but the whole car doesn't want to move. It's like it wants to rotate on its center. They've definitely massively improved this, though. Like, this feels a lot better than it used to. Now, the brake pressure's fine. Yeah, I mean, I, the, the overstick can just be modulated by using a throttle different. Is it? I don't know if there's a solution with any of the cars in this, in terms of stopping them doing mid corner uh, understeer. Like, there's not enough lift off over. There's not enough lift off oversteer once you're already into the corner. Like, all the oversteer comes from the throttle rather than lifting. And everything you do to address it produces snap over steer on, on the start of a corner where you don't want it. The only solution seems to be to apply brake and accelerate at the same time. weird this car's also driving as if it doesn't have downforce Should be good for racing, though. How's Tom so quick? <laughs> Can we get a ban on this Tom guy? I 
I guess I have gone off the road a few times. Try and straighten things up a bit. I don't think uh, setup will uh, uh, address the issue, Speed Force, because I think it's just an eight to the tire model in the physics engine. Hello, Tinge Ball. The car's not doing like totally stupid things though, which is good because in the earlier versions of this The car would just be new like there'd, there'd be no slip that's controllable So this is the thing like even if aspects of the physics engine are, are, are in a given sim are different and maybe not to my preference As long as there's a margin you can play with you know like a bit A bit of play to it. It doesn't really matter because it's you know, you just learn that game, but you can. There's something to play with. There's one of the big problems with eye racing is there's no margin to play with. <laughs> so even if in some ways it's more realistic, when you get towards the limit, it's like well, it's just a binary condition. We're getting up there though. Tom's uh, needs to be needs his legs amputated. It's cheating. Throw it in. <laughs> like, I don't think we should be flying out of that corner sideways. It should just be like a nice gentle exit. Glorious seventh there. He's lost it. Oh, it's seven o'clock death hour. Type dead in chat, guys, if you've died. <laughs> That's what happens. You get a cup of tea. Get a cup of tea and uh, everyone dies. It's tea time for everyone. 140 was your fastest time. Bloody hell. I'm doing something really wrong then. <laughs> A dead, dead, dead. Everybody's dead, Dave. I was just having a little bit of a break. I wasn't well for a week and then I had uh, some family come over for a bit, so. <laughs> oh, that's nice of him. Got out of the way there. How you doing, Matthew? Matthew Bedford! That's it. <laughs> you need uh, you need a catheter as well. <laughs> Unique wit. <laughs> I, I just mark wave my head every day.
I tried to take a tire line there, it didn't, didn't really work. Oh, I think I'll get one more, get to finish this lap, I think. Can't remember if you do get to finish. I think you I think you do get to finish your lap in this, if you're on the out lap. In AC you do. In race room you don't. In ACC you do. I like WRC9. I've only I've not played through the single player though, but I, I enjoy playing the uh, events. I quite like the handling in it. lost all my time on the chicane there it's given us 102 minutes to uh, finish qualifying 102 seconds <laughs> it's given us an hour and a half to finish this lap that makes sense oh get ready for some draft theft yes <laughs> cheat <laughs> total cheat I was going to try and bump him there through Ah, oh, take that. Sixth place. We're two seconds off the pace, though. It's ridiculous. Big suck. Tom's in first place. Jacrio F1 second. Mad Rat third. Blade Wolf. Recently, I got myself into racing league, kind of bricking it, as I know at first I'll be one of the slowest. Oh, don't worry about it. Just, just try not to crash people and have a good time. You're all good. Just drive into people. It's fine. What you need to do is make sure that they're, the people you drive into are live streaming so you can you can watch them cry afterwards. Make sure you hit them good and hard. <laughs> Tom's part of the Matrix, that's why. We could do Janetta next. We did that yesterday, it was alright. Here we go. Six laps. Yeah, he must be doing some setup shenanigans. Maybe I'll, restart, I'll redo the server with fixed setup and see what that's like. <laughs> that was that was sort of the, the wheat from the chaff. I'm going to be the chaff, obviously, but, you know. Well, if you if you take everyone out in the race, then at least the rest of the race will be driving clean because there's no one else to drive into. So you might have done everyone a favour if you preemptively strike them early on. It's genius. Look at this, Nitney Nitney in seventh, Mahad eighth, very secrets in ninth. We've got to destroy these people. It's a matter of honour. <laughs> oh, what? Yeah, watch out the brakes don't work at the start. Of course, you know, T1, everyone's going to crash into each other. It's kind of inevitable. Here we go.
<laughs> there goes one car. Woo! Yeah, the brakes didn't work too well. Serengeti Joyride. Ah, oh, no one reminded me to turn the driver names off. Or to bind a button for it. Woo, drifting that. <laughs> Total angle on the exit there. More, more angle than Pythagoras. Get your graphics calculator out. Uh, I think it's a, it's, a, it's a sequential, but they do versions. It depends which version of this car. In real life, there's a sequential one and a flappy one. Well, F, there's like loads of F3 three cars kind of like a not not necessarily what they're using on tv now in that series but globally she is uh driving a lot better though like net code and everything actually <laughs> nothing ridiculous is happening <laughs> we'd have cars on top of cars makes it much more enjoyable to play for some reason having cars floating on top of each other kind of ruins the immersion of the game you know bloody hell stuck off road he's totally coming up the inside i'll leave space there he is <laughs> natanee to stick through there. Hello, Mr. Scrutinizer. Are you, uh... Oh, shit. Bugger me. Are you the guy uh, with the broken leg? <laughs> broken ankle. Oh, no! <laughs> Do you know what? I think 2080s will probably go up in value at a later date. I think they'll drop in value now because everybody is selling them off. Hey, What's... Okay, the brakes are still erratic in this in terms of when it locks up and how long it takes to slow down. Yeah, I, I think cause a lot of people are selling off their 2080s, 2080 Ti's right now. And I think then... Uh... And the price will stabilise again. Well, maybe not that much more. Toasty man in front of us here. It's just that a lot of people with 2080s are going to uh, move into three, uh, 3080s. But yeah, it seems a bit premature because I don't know what the benchmarks are for games that we actually play. Is it like benchmarks might be from stuff using DLSS and things, which hardly anything uses. I'm sure a 3080 is good though. Probably it probably is worth the upgrade, but. We haven't actually seen. The thing is, people are saying, "Oh, it, it, it beats these, it beats that, it beats this." We haven't actually seen benchmarks in games <laughs> that everyone plays. You know, a lot of the benchmarks are in games that are already running at 70 plus FPS on a 2018. It's like, well, at that point, at that point, it's like, well, it's like, you know. If, you, if you're already passing like 80, 90, 70, 80, 90 FPS, 
then what's another 10 FPS? It's nothing. So, oh yeah, I watched the, I watched the Digital Foundry one. Tech Jesus. The, the only thing that matters from an uh, individual's perspective when it comes to graphics cards is what performance do you get in the games that you play? <laughs> it's like... I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure the 30 series cards are quite a bit faster, but... It's like when the 20 series cards came out. It's like, well... If you only play... If you play Counter-Strike or most of the... Most of the games that have come out in the last three or four years... There's no point in upgrading from the 10 series cards. Ah, well, I, I only tr I only trust gamers Nexus. <laughs> Yeah, so, but for, for example, ACC is an example. You, you need, like, 80% more performance to be able to get ACC to run in VR acceptably. You know? So even, an, even a 3090 probably won't be enough. That'll be interesting to see, at least. Yeah, I think uh, Counter-Strike Go on my system runs at about 270, 280 FPS. <laughs> I should probably cap it. It's a waste of uh, electricity. Uh, yeah, well, the reason ACC doesn't look nice in VR is just because of the Unreal Engine. It's like fundamental to the game engine. They... They just don't... Kunos do not care about VR as the main decision when it came to ACC. And the whole point of ACC is Kunos selling to uh, Bros Incorporated and then having the Kunos physics in a game engine that can then be used for multiple products. It's not about... <laughs> it's not about what's best for the end user. It's about... It's a corporate decision. They still, which will have benefits for the end user in many ways, but AC, the, the whole, you look at the decision making behind ACC, it's basically to do with selling a company to a publisher, so that Stef, um, what's his face, um, Stefano could uh, leave the company and work on other stuff that he wants to work on, basically. Effectively, ACC is a way was a way for Kunos to sell the AC physics and IP to a publisher that then would allow the key staff that want to leave to leave the company. <laughs> if you think of it in that from that perspective, then you know it makes sense. And I'm not, I'm not even saying that's a negative thing. I'm just saying that's the perspective that you probably need to look at it from. A uh, car crash still runs pretty slow if you consider how much more simple of a game it is compared to ACC. There's a lot less going on in a go-kart simulator. Smaller track, less detailed vehicles, less complicated physics potentially. I mean, I don't know, but potentially. Less stuff in the back end. I mean, just the track's being... Uh, small like literally physically smaller could have a big impact on frame rate when it comes to unreal engine you think a car a cart craft track is not that different in size to what you would find in an, as a normal video game level for, for you know like for what unreal is typically used for 
whereas a <laughs> a full like F1 circuit is is way bigger than what you typically find in an Unreal base game. See, this race is completed, but I haven't got AI controlled. Oh, glorious seventh, guys. <laughs> Tom bloody won it. Cheated. Oh, yeah, that'll be really interesting to see, won't it? That VR Medal of Honor does look interesting. Yeah. Right. Now I've got to wait till the session finishes. It's, I think it's if you finish before the race complete alert, then you get then you get the external view. The phone's just driving into each other. Uh, no, I think it might be an Oculus exclusive because I think Oculus paid for them to make it. Well done, Tom Drakio F1 Mad Rats. Nice driving, guys. Top three bonanza there. I think we need a slower car. Hello, Chad Ed. How's it going? <laughs> Rental car. Hot cars. These are all front wheel drive, though. Don't do front wheel drive. I'm not a hot car. What's this? <laughs> we'll drive 8 V8. That's not slower. Stock car. Old old stock. Ah, uh, we should have a supercar race. <laughs> Oh, we, did, we were going to do a Janetta race, weren't we? There we go. Oh, we should do a Brands Hatch Classic. Can't go wrong. You'd... It's like the... Ah, oh, we'll have a look at that afterwards. Try the Puma. It's not a Puma. Ah, oh, fixed setups. Yeah, sorry. Quitting the server, guys. I totally forgot about that. Jeez. Like, someone's brain's in gear. Mine's not. Well, yeah, yeah, we're going to try the fixed setup thing. Sorry. Format your C drives, guys. Going to make a new server with fixed setups. See how this works. Ignore that server. <laughs> server murder. Server has gone. The server has been killed. Yeah, it's the end of that server. You are now sent to hell to be trapped on the server forever. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Went all Santa Claus there. I don't know why. Uh, here we go. Create a new server. Can we do 32 player lobby? I'll have a look. I don't, I don't know if my internet's going to... I'll have to turn, let me turn this down. It might work. Settings. Output. Let's go for... Okay. I have to reduce my bit rate and it should work. Uh, where is it? Host settings, maybe. Do you want a fixed setup racing song? Fixed setup song. Fixed setup racing. Fixed setup racing. 
password is T. The password is T. In capital letters. Fix setup racing. Fix setup racing. Fix setup racing. That's the, that's the lyrics, that was it. <laughs> that was the song. Oh, where's the bloody setting? Fix setup racing. Well, I don't know where the uh, setting is. I think the tracks don't fit 33, that's the problem. Is it in the realism settings? Oh, here we go. Oh, you are literally on it. What else do I need to set? That'll do. Fix setup racing. Just have to do that every time the uh, the music gets to that point. Okay, that's it, isn't it? Fix setup racing. It's a literal song with literal words. Fix setup racing. Racing with fix setup racing. Setups are fixed. Fix setup racing. What are the setups? They're fixed. Fix setup racing. Fix setup. Fix setup racing. Fix setup. Fix setup racing. I'm a hipster. Fix. <laughs> we like. To race with us. Setup racing. That's a top ten hit if there ever was one. <laughs> I don't know why no one's released any songs in the in the in the charts. The cat's like, what the fuck? Uprising, guys, you watch out. The server filter song. Finally, the pen in his eyes. Right, uh, fix that up. That's it. We've got to go with this. There's no choices. Gonna be down to raw driver talent and skill here. Because you guys know what it is. Right, enough of that. Oh, 
Oh. I want to change the camera to uh, locked horizon because I'm getting dizzy. <laughs> World movement. Ah, oh, is it less or more? I can't remember. I might have done it the wrong way there. I oh, know that's right. I think. Do you guys like? Right, here we go. Now we're going to see who's the best. <laughs> so I might put the camera movement on zero. Because uh, I know it looks terrible, but it's... Uh Where was it? Camera. Oh, I need to bind the button for the uh, boat to boat face. Spin dryer. I need to bind a button for the um, driver names. Where is it? There we go. POV down. I'm just going to put it to end. Okay. What's this music about? How is, that's not dance music, that's the sound of someone walking. Right, I don't I don't know what that is. Yeah, DD wheel paint to win only. That's that's how I like it. That's the way it needs to be. No, hang on. This is moving around even more. <laughs> hang on. What is going on here? Now we're getting wit. Okay. I'm going to die of camera settings here. Put a donk on it. Sounds like a horse eating something. Now, now that's 100% locked to the bonnet. Oh, man. It wasn't like that in uh, Project Cars 2. <laughs> What's going on here? Okay, yeah, let's put it on 30. I'll, I'll let you have it. Have it your way. Bloody helmet. Is this <laughs> horse eating grass is putting me off? Really helps me focus. <laughs> What's going on? That's a great, great track. I love this song. It's one of my favourites. What a tune, guys! It's really helping me uh, get into the spirit of motorsport. Jesus Christ, it sounds like something the... It sounds like something the government would use to torture prisoners to get information out of them. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. We've got the sound of a horse eating bricks. No, it's, it's from my music. <laughs> I've used the term music loosely. Are you joining the server, Mr. Andrew? This, this fit setup's fine. Apart from the understeer. 
late corner on this dip. We can still change brake by, so that's all right. Oh, here we go. Got music again now. Happy times. Basimracing.com. All your sim racing news in one place. Don't just sim race, be simracing.com. Oh. <laughs> what? Okay. Game minimized. Not sure what happened there. That did not help my lap time. Ah, you can't. I broke after when I saw this sliding. Ah. <laughs> did you post it on your website as well? Glad you enjoyed it. You already. Oh shit, my controls aren't working. What? Oh, there we go. You, you already posted Barry's review. Barry. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Double post. Tortured it. What? I've broken my car here. What? Oh, there we go. Nice one. Yeah, I kind of broke the wheel a little bit by throwing it off a hill, but. It's a shame that that wheel doesn't have maximum torque, like, because it's in an elite wheel. So it's fine with, like, um, the elite wheelbase and everything. Like, that's obviously what it's designed for. It's a shame with the DD wheels. It, it, it doesn't give you full torque, because it's a nice wheel. I think they've been extra safe with it as well. I think it could have actually have had higher torque. Now, this is quality. It's five minutes left. Here we go. Where am I? 16th, right. Let's get up there. What have you been up to, Wim? Server pass with his team capital letters, but uh, it might be full soon. Uh, yeah, the, the uh, all Fanatec stuff is cross compatible. Uh, even though. All, the, all their wheels are compatible with all the wheel rims. It's just that it, if you use it on a DD, it'll, it, it's as if you've not got the torque key in. It still feels fine. Like as I said in the review, if you're playing rally games, it's fine. But if you, you know, if you're doing track racing and you want to crank up the force feedback a bit, then you miss out with the, you're missing out on the full potential of your DD1 or DD2. But with the Club Sport wheelbase, the CSL Elite, it's fine. <laughs> oh, I'm sure they're paying you double as well, right? Because that's how it works. Twice as much work, twice as much pay, right? <laughs> Obviously. I mean, it'd be criminal for it not to work like that. I mean, you wouldn't have large corporate entities using this whole situation as a way to extract even more profit. 
That would be absurd. What a ridiculous thing to suggest. Uh, I think they might do. I don't know. Because that adapter is removable, uh, Mon Lord. So I guess maybe they might do in the future. It's really, it's a really good uh, quick release system, though. Like as I said, the the, the quick release of this, like the quick release on the elite, uh, on the um, club sports stuff, great. Like, it, I don't think there's particularly an issue with it. It's really weird. Barry did that video where he's like, "Oh, there's all this flex," <laughs> and like, yeah, there is flex if you push on it mentally. Well, actually, on some of them, because it's not something I have an issue with, but uh, on some of them. If you push on it in certain ways, you, you, it moves a little bit. Uh, I say, that's not a problem I have, but... Uh, it was only when Barry had done his video that all these people were like, Oh, no, it's, t <laughs> it's just terrible. It's like, well, you probably wouldn't have noticed unless someone pointed it out, you know? Uh, but, but separate to that, so I actually think the old quick release is okay. But objectively speaking, that twisty quick release and the way it works seems to work a bit better. Uh, it seems to go onto the shaft easier for some reason. It's, it, and a lot of it is, is it's easier to rotate something than it is to pull a thing in and pull it out. It's easier to rotate it and then have both hands to pull it out is, is the main thing. I mean, it really is nitpicking, but so I'd like to see him do that with their other stuff. Yeah, well, I, no, I, my my wheels are all lubed up. Like, I say, it's not a, it's not a problem. I'll just say it's just marginally nicer. So what's weird? Having been to Brands Hatch in real life, you actually notice the camber that is there in the simulator and the and the shape of the track more than I noticed it before in simulators. <laughs> it's, it's weird. It's like seeing it in real life has made it more obvious what was already there in the sim. Twist and pull. <laughs> well, I don't... Plastic's not necessarily bad. Like, um, proper ABS plastic isn't inherently worse than metal in, in certain scenarios. I mean, you look at, like, kitchen sinks and stuff. Some of them are made out of plastic, and they sell for multiple hundreds of pounds. Or even, like, newer newer bathtubs <laughs> made out of, like, vinyl and other acrylic and what have you, types of plastic and what have you, as opposed to metal. Like, the assumption that metal's always better is kind of not the case. Yeah, I think that, James, I think that's more of a field of view thing, but I know what you mean. I, I, I've i been around Donington in real life on the, on the track, and it definitely seemed wider in real life than what I remembered in any of the simulators. And then, obviously, in a car in real life, it feels like there's a thousand times more grip <laughs> than what's ever in a simulator. But... Um, you just notice the camber and the, the how steep... The corners are in real life. Like, I, I can see it now, and I can notice it now. But I didn't. That's after being there. It's, it's almost seeing it in real life makes it more realistic in the simulator, which is weird. Like these these corners are actually quite severely cambered in real life, and, and it is quite like the the corner up to Druids is really steep, <laughs> like really steep in real life. And also, Druids... Uh, Druids Corner has shitloads of camber on it in real life. You can kind of see it here, but in real... It looks like... See how my hand is flat like this? This is flat, right? <laughs> There's a flat hand for you. Flat feet relative to you, right? 
Druids, as you as you look at it in real life, is if it's cambered like that. <laughs> it's like it's it's more like a it's more like a ramp or something going around in a you know like you're going like that in a car, <laughs> as opposed to going around a flat thing, which explains why you see people doing weird spins on that corner because there's so much weird camber. If someone was, if, if someone just asked you and they said, um, they gave you like a 3D modeling thing or gave you some clay and they said, ah, oh, model druids, most people I think would just model it flat. <laughs> they wouldn't model it like a scare electrics, like a track mania corner. Yeah, there's druids there, but they're invisible because they're conducting a magic spell. Jim Boom in first place, the Creo second, very secret third. Chris Bow's <laughs> in eight. <laughs> Here we go, guys. It's time for an emotional race at Brands Hatch with fixed setups. Fasten your seatbelts. Get ready. That was the emotional intro. I hope you enjoyed that. No setup changes here. No fuel, nothing. We're just straight to racing, guys. Yeah, that's another thing in real life that you don't notice in Sims. Thanks for subscribing. Um, in real life, sausage curbing and curbing is effing massive. Like, you think, if I hit that, the wheels will come off the car. <laughs> in a simulator, it's like, I oh, will just drive over it. It'll be fine. <laughs> Donington's a really good example of that. Like, you would probably rip the underside of most vehicles off if you cut the final corner. Like, if you did the short track... And you went over those sausages. It, it, a road car would rip the bottom of the car off. It totally, well, it'd either bounce or something, you know. If the front bumper contacted those curbs, it would f the car up. As if you, it's, it's higher than pavement. So, <laughs> you know. Here we go. Fix setup, bonanza. All right, can you, whoa, can you guys remind me to move the uh, the hood closer to the middle so I can see the driver names? Woo -hoo! Nice. Ah, uh, over, he's overcooked the brakes there. <laughs> Once you're turned and you get on the brakes, the cars tend to keep uh, skidding. Nittany behind us. Mad right in front of us here. Hey, can remind me next week. Thank you for that. That's, that's very handy. No, no aero boing going on here, guys. No aero boing going on. <laughs> aero boy denied. Around the outside. <laughs> I'm lucky. <laughs> yeah, that, you really have to turn the brakes down in this, I think, because it once you get over that limit, it just there's, there's no recovery. Maybe turning this. I might turn the skid sound up. That might help as well. Over quick wink winkled. Thank you, John. <laughs> Is random call sign live streaming? You should all pop over and click his like button. Tell him that uh, Portuguese wine is terrible. <laughs> Whoa, battling up front there. P1 and P2. Ah, 
Uh, AC's alright though. I do like AC. Oh, hello. Thank you for subscribing. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm playing this because I want to do a, a video, an update video on it, and I need to go through the content <laughs> before doing a video on it. So what I thought, I might as well live stream it. Have some fun. Ah, these guys are pulling away. I need to get up onto them. TV DG. But yeah, it's, it's weird how... I should probably do a separate video on it, but how going to a racetrack then makes it feel more realistic when you play it in a sim. I think what happens is you obviously see more of the track and so your, your subconscious builds up an image of everything that's around the track as well. And so when you're playing on the track in the sim, it look, obviously the track looks similar, but then your mind is like filling in stuff that's not actually there in the simulator. So it makes it a richer experience than it actually is. So, for example, I know in Brands Hatch, in real life, there's like all footpaths down the side here in the infield uh, forest. And there's a little uh, rally track. Like, well, it's not really a rally track, but, you know, like a, a little rally stage section for doing rally testing. You know, it's like houses on the left here. And they've not modelled them in this. It's so like people, yeah, they've not modelled them here. But there's people's houses there on the left. <laughs> Well, you know, me and RC should do, uh, should race on the same server. <laughs> it really annoys Random Corsan when the stream at the same time. He, he's been, Random Corsan keeps trying to poison me with Nova check. It's not work though, I keep coming back from the dead. I keep using my NHS healthcare. Uh, have they modelled them in this? Oh, fair enough, Kitex. <laughs> they should have the infield. You should be able to drive, walk around the footpath. Ah, oh, huge error. Does that mean... Oh, he's got to leave space so he doesn't drive into us when he rejoins. There we go. Are we on in third place? Oh, yes. TVDG self, self winkled. What's it? Oh, my love... I have, there's nothing happening in my love life at the moment. It's ruined by COVID. <laughs> I can't meet up with anyone. I want to go off to... Uh, <laughs> I want to go off to Germany. <laughs> Bloody hell, sliding everywhere here. Eh? Yeah, see, when it gets stuck in that slide there, you really just have to wait. And not get on the throttle at all. And really hold, wait for the count, wait for the, uh, wait for it to come back. <laughs> Kidnap a German. It's not that, it's more just like the awkwardness of meeting up with people uh, that aren't like, you know, getting on all the public transport and everything. And going out. I, I don't really want to go out to pubs and things, you know. <laughs> I, I, I like just meeting up with people randomly. I don't like, um, you know, prearranging things. I'm a spontaneous type person. Here we go. Wow, too, too wide. 
Ah, uh, okay. Hang on, hang on. After this race, we'll uh, we can raid random call sign and get him to 30k. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't say that. Come on. Final lap. Bloody hell, they pulled away from us. P1 and P2. It's quite a nice car for, for racing, though. Chris Bow's got to relearn the physics. <laughs> physics, school... Back in action for Chris Bow. Any of you in chat get a Uber Eats discount thing in the post recently? Because I got a, a £10 off first order. Minimum order £15. I'm thinking... I'm thinking, here we go. That's a, that's a Five Guys burger, that is. Or maybe, maybe it's a, a curry, proper curry. Being single is not so... But yeah, well, I, this is the thing. I actually... Um, I've really enjoyed being single for the last two and a bit years. Three three years. Uh, I've, I've, like, enjoyed it. But I, I had made, like, a conscious decision. I was like, oh, the 2020... I was like, 2020, I, you know, I've been single for, like, two and a bit years. I'm good to, like... Like, uh start a proper relationship again, you know. I've had, I've had my singleness and then COVID happened. I was like, oh, fuck yeah. But, you know. It is not, especially if you're a YouTuber, it's actually very convenient being uh, single, to be honest. <laughs> so it's quite good. Once I've got, uh, once we've got like 100,000 subs, 200,000 subs, then I can, uh, then that's it. Oh, you don't have Uber Eats. Uh, I mean, it se Uber Eats seems like a bad thing to me. Right, here we go. Let's get ra let's raid random call sign here. Right. Let's look at the results as well. Well done. Oh, here we go. It's swipping over. Jim Boom. Very secret. Myself, Mad Rats, TVDG, Kim and Chris. Bow. Top seven. Nice driving, guys. Okay, guys, you do me a favor, even if you hate random call signs face. If we can get him like 30, if, if 30 of you that haven't subscribed to him can go over to his channel, let's have a look. And we can get, and if he can get to, uh, what's he on now? 29.9. What's he saying? Let's go in his chat. Uh, I don't know which DLC. That's uh, that's the one. Go in his chat, guys. Right, let's harass oh, him. Yes, in. Woo! Subscribe. Go and subscribe Dr. to him. Wasmeister. <laughs> I don't know as well. Uh, it's one of those. Go, go uh, in his chat, guys. Subscribe. Twenty-nine thousand. Type type some new subscriber. In sixty-six. I need thirty-four more. Type new. Hello, GM. <laughs> How are you, James? Hey, CB, how are you doing? Go guys. and subscribe to him, guys. Hey, Bissim Racing, how are you doing, man? We are both live! Wow! <laughs> Go on, subscribe, guys! Then he has to delete his channel. Come play, come on. I have something really cool. Now I'm not. He thinks I'm, I'm not playing with random call cool, Sam. We're gonna we're gonna play. <laughs> Almost there. We still need a few more. 
<laughs> Link, oh yeah, let me paste the link. I, can someone else paste it? I can't get it on. Hang on, maybe oh, I can shit, do it this oh, way. Shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, this is bad. It's got a pot potty mouth. Uh, we'll do another race in a second, guys, uh, on Automobiles 2. Here we go. There you go. Go there. Click subscribe. <laughs> Ruin his life. <laughs> subscribe. In. Type subscribe in chat if you subscribe to him as well. Hurry up, guys! What is he doing? He's going to delete his channel at 30k. I'm not sure, man. It's going to take a while. There's no... Nobody is... <laughs> is subscribing, so... Nobody's... <laughs> YouTube's banned him. It must yeah, be. Yeah, it's still... Same number, man. Ah, uh, it's delayed. What does it say on uh, YouTube? Let's refresh it. YouTube sometimes does that. It like doesn't count the subs for ages. It's really annoying. Right, we're gonna we'll go back to another race. Five more PSI all around. Otherwise, this car will be completely uncontrollable. <laughs> unsub to resub. <laughs> yeah, unsub. Uh, unsubscribe. Eight people. We unsubscribe. Need more. more. And subscribe. I've subscribed again. <laughs> Breaking it all. <laughs> it's all broken. Right. Right. Let's get back to AMS2, guys. We need more people. We need more subscribers to random call sign to uh, so we can cry. Get an emotional moment. Okay. If someone would tell a stranger that random was the son of Thomas Jacomaya. <laughs> He's not crazy enough. To uh, Fanatec Thomas is mental, like in a good way, but he <laughs> he's bonkers. <laughs> he's, a, he's a good guy, but he's, he is mental. Oh, dear. Right. Next race, guys. It's a fun little excursion there. AMS2 is a false god. I know, but I'm going to... Oh, look, now we're getting a B-Sim racing com. advert. What's happening? All your sim racing <laughs> news in one place. Don't just I want to do a video on AMS2, so I've, I've got to get through content here, com. so I can actually do it. I can't just... I mean, I know it is the YouTube thing to just pull things out of your ass, which, I mean, I do do a fair bit of that, but uh, I feel like we should actually play the game before talking about it. Uh, are you on about in in this, the bumps are too... Yeah, this, this is weird, because it's that's what makes, I think, good on a motion rig. The fixed setup thing's pretty good though, because the um seems to actually help. Right, what car are we going for, guys? Like the the default setups aren't crap, is what I'm saying. So you can have like fun racing. There we go, Cooper Uno. <laughs> it's gonna be interesting. I don't want to do 15 minutes in this car. Unfortunately, you can't change session stuff, which is rubbish. B B B B B Sim Racing. These are all... Oh, here we go. This is rear... Ah, there we go. Now we're talking. Rear wheel drive. Go for it. T in capital letters. George's simulations. Hello and welcome to the funky Automobilista 2 Racing Club. I'm going for smoke today. Smoking or racing. Welcome to the channel. So cool. So Dutch. It's a funky Dutch soundtrack. <laughs> so, do you want to smoke? It's time for a smoke. Let's go for a smoke. Smoking. Did you hear um, that there's a new Borat film? It's already finished filming. It's going to be awesome. It sounds like a cop, Nick. <laughs> I'm a babushka, babushka muscle. What is this? Oh, it's go kart track. Pancake time. Hang on, is this rip off Suzuka? 
Just in case. Landerina so what is it? what are these tracks? What is Santa Cruz? <laughs> I don't know these tracks. I need a picture so I can get an idea of if they'll be good with these. Here we go. Silverstone International will be good with these cars. Sorted. People will be more offended. You know, do you know what I say to that? I, I say, I say, f*** them. <laughs> the offended people. <laughs> go, go and f*** yourself. <laughs> you know. I'm I'm offended. Who, who gives a shit that I'm offended? Why do people think that other people should care if they're offended? Do you know what I mean? It's weird, isn't it? It's like loads of things that I think are offensive, but I don't expect other people to give a damn that I'm offended by them. And also, why why does it matter? Ah, oh, it's not in the base game. You've been evicted. <laughs> oh, no. I can't quit now. You need to buy the DLC, I'm afraid. You peasant. <laughs> I didn't buy it. <laughs> I stole it. Well, I want to see what this is like, at least. Is it a track? Oh, this might be really fun, actually. How much is the DLC? Hey, what's going on here? <laughs> Enjoy your nine-player race. This is why people play AC instead of this, because it doesn't have DLC issues. Well, it does, but it's so cheap it doesn't matter. Yeah, I'd say that's the worst thing that Reza have done with this game is they've priced it wrong. If Reza had priced this game, like the base game at, like, say, £15, which, are, you know, yeah, sure, that's not a lot, you know, maybe it's worth more from the amount of work they put into it perspective, but from their brand and what would probably equal more sales, they'll probably make more money by selling it for less. So they really... <laughs> the fact that they called it Automobilista 2 was a total failure as well because as a brand, Automobilista to anyone outside, like, it doesn't mean anything. It's a really bad name for a game. They should have called it Brazilian Grid Girl Racing. <laughs> Brazilian Hot Babe Racing. You know, that might be offensive to some, but it would work. It would add, it would get set. If they added grid girls to this, that would top selling game. Yeah, so how much, uh, how much is the DLC? Maybe I can get uh, Renato to give me some DLC keys. To give out to the peasant subscribers. Sounds like a good idea to me. <laughs> Brazil! Brazil sim race! Yeah! Brazil racing simulator. That probably would actually still get more sales. And, and it'd still be true to what it's called. Brazilian racing sim. And also, people would be like, oh, I wonder what racing in Brazil's like. I'll get that, because that looks fun. Sell it for uh, 20 quid. 20 quid plus 10 quid for each DLC that comes out. Sorted. I know the thing is, 
The reason they sell it for the price they do is because they they have like uh, AMS two fa uh, AMS fanboys that bought into it, and they don't want to like upset their like fanboys. But it's like, forget your fanboys. You want to make you want to make the game as good as possible, and your fans should can go and f off if they don't understand what makes a game sell better. <laughs> I like having a beat button because I can be rude. You can all go and f yourselves. <laughs> you mother... Hang on, you mother... <laughs> You're a total... <laughs> It'll turn out the beep's not working and my channel gets removed. Oh, well. Car's like a right slidey demon. My microphone is right in the direction of my nostril breath. Makes no sense at all. I don't know why I breathe through my nose when sim racing. Don't breathe through my mouth. Stop the visor getting fogged up. 899 just for Silverstone. It's a bit silly, isn't it? The track that's in most simulators is the default track. Mouse sim racer. <laughs> There's definitely something happens with this where once you go over the rear grip. Oh, whilst you're braking, there's like a delay in time from when you come off the brakes and then the grip returns to the tyres. But getting on the throttle somehow makes the grip return quicker. I'm not... Even if with a rear-wheel drive car, so I don't know what's going on there. Oh, a new best sector time there. No, it's not downforce. It's it's like a delay in the response of the tyres. Depend like it doesn't make sense. Like when you come off the brakes, the grip should like the wheels start rolling immediately. <laughs> so, like if you're even if you're in a real big slot, like let well, unless you're going laterally sideways loads, but if you're braking in a straight line. The point, as soon as you come off the brake, the wheels rotate immediately and the grip comes back immediately. There's no delay there. It's like instant. It's, it's as if there's a delay between when the wheels start rotating again from a lockup or something. We're ramming this through these corners. <laughs> Don't know if this is the fastest way to drive. Yeah, I, I've had to turn the brake sensitivity really far down to stop it. If you lock up, then it just rotates. You can't do anything. Whereas in, for, in AC, for example, when you lock up, if you come off the brake straight away, the grip comes back.
I'd say also in this, the scaling between when you're on the limit and locking up is like a really tight margin on the brakes relative to other simulators. In other sims, you have a much wider margin from braking before it locks up. What? This car's only got four gears. <laughs> I only just noticed. Oh, we're in first place. Champion. Raw talent, guys. <laughs> Raw fixed setup talent. All we have to do is rig things so that our equipment makes a difference. I think AMS 2 is still good. It's just like... I don't think the physics are better than AC. They need to release it on console, then it will really have its own place. They need to reduce the price of it. What? <laughs> and release it on console as well. Peter Sniffer, the, the, the problem is... I wonder how many, how much of the innate issues are down to the some specific fundamentals of the Madness Tire model, and if they can be addressed, like how how they address them. It might be that the fundamental tire model is has like some wonkiness to it that you just you know, you could you can try and smooth over it as best possible, but it might be limited what you can do with it. I think they released this on console. They need to call it something different, though. <laughs> it's just a terrible name for a game. I'm going to release a racing game without the word car or race or... I mean, I don't know. You could, wait, you could say the same about Project Gotham, couldn't you? <laughs> It's cruising down here. Oh, yeah, Project Gotham Race. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I kind of forgot about the racing part there. Just to, to, don't mind me. Yeah. It's just people called it PGR, though, didn't they? They didn't really call it Project Gotham Racing. They'd just say PGR. Yeah, I guess Gran Turismo, yeah. But then again, that's playing on, like, 10 years of brand awareness. And, and it being a launch title on console. <laughs> and it being the first, like, one of those sort of benchmark games, like the early Gran Turismo games. So, it's you know, they could have called it anything. Hello, I'm all right. Chair muscles in the sitting room. AC2 is never happening. <laughs> Unless uh, Stefano wants to make a new simulator on his own. <laughs> Wee! This car is quite a good turning circle. Let's make a good city car. You you couldn't you couldn't do a single. Oh, you might on a British street. You might just be able to get this around an English road. Probably have to put a wheel on the curb. 
Well, it might it might just be able to make a corner, uh, like do a U turn without having to do a U turn. Not on a city street though. <laughs> Forty six seconds until the race starts. I've already set the championship lap here. Game default car. <laughs> yeah, I wonder if they started ACC before they decided to sell the company or ACC2. I get the impression that maybe they started working on ACC2 and then they were like, oh, oh actually, I don't know. I don't know. Be interesting to ask them. So I can, sh I can shout abuse at people in that sim. I can be told where to fly. Here we go. Qualifying over. Let's look at the results here. Pedro, Paulo, Silva, El Elkmite, top three there. Clinny Clown, fourth. Kralis, Grabuskas, fifth. Technil, sixth. Greg's in seventh. Carl, eighth. Adridisa, ninth. Kim in tenth. Here we go. Yeah, that's what I think, Erwin. I, I, I think... I, I get the impression that with... <laughs> it seems to me like I, I think Stefano... Uh, not uh, Yeah, Stefano wanted to move... Was, like, bored of doing the same thing constantly or just you're basically doing menial programming work rather than exploratory experimental programming work from my experience a lot of programmers they you know they, if they're graphics programmers they want to keep doing like new things with graphics if they do if they're physics programmers they don't want to just keep you know they want to they want to do new physics on different things they don't want to just keep going all oh, right i'm implementing the the this new random thing for another car and another car and another car and then i'm fixing these other issues that need fixed and i'm fixing this issue i'm fixing that issue oh this other thing needs to be implemented i'm fixing it you know instead of actually doing what they really want to be doing they end up just doing loads of menial tasks that just aren't fun um so i get the impression that uh steph stefano possibly wanted to leave the company to pursue something or, or just wanted to pursue something else whilst within the company i don't know possibly and uh, I get the impression that the opportunity to sell the company came up in a way where they, whoever wanted to keep working there on that could keep working on there on that. And whoever wanted to leave could leave if they wanted to. Um, and from a publisher's perspective, you want something like the, the AC physics in Unreal Engine means that they can keep developing it in the future. Like once you've got the physics there and you've bought that, they can release like... From now on, they can keep releasing it, drop realistic driving games in Unreal Engine, New, different tracks, different whatever. Use the same physics engine. You've got a realistic driving game. You know they could do off-road driving games. They could do NASCAR. They could do oval. They could do track. They could do whatever licensing they do. They've got the physics engine there. They know it's going to work. It's the risk has been removed. That's uh... so yeah. <laughs> So the whole point of the whole point of ACC is Kunos being able to s sell AC to a publisher. Basically, <laughs> it's not in the benefit of the end user at all, but there are benefits there for end users that will come of it. But it's not, you know. Why, why would you continue with a sailing sim? Oh, it's sailing sim. I don't know. Maybe, maybe he's just finding it enjoyable. It's a different challenge. Um. Why not? <laughs> so why, you know, from a programmer's perspective, it might be really interesting, and he doesn't need any money, so it's like you might as well do what you think's fun, and then at the end of the day, the reason why AC existed in the first place was because of Stefano, and I guess the other guys as well going. You know, they're like, oh, well, we like driving simulators. And can we make our own? <laughs> Let's do it for fun, basically. Like, I don't think they didn't do... You don't build a game like the original Assetto Corsa thinking, oh, what would be the best way to make money? <laughs> you, you know, it's like you just wouldn't. So, you know, I think a lot of the best games end up being passion projects. And then over time, they might move away from being a passion project and turn into a business. 
which can suit some people and not suit other people. Right, here we go. Uh, there we go. T in capital letters is the password. I like to put my cars in reverse gear. It's the best gear to use. Draw gear, guys, running away. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> you gotta slow down really early for that corner. Oh no! He's gone. <laughs> Why is he gone? Oh no. He's vanished. Been abducted. I wonder if he just crashed. Yeah, some some game engines aren't uh, aren't uh, set up so that they could be um, content can just be stuck in and removed at, at, at will. Some things are compiled into like a singular package and. Yeah, it depends how it's set up. How come my car seems faster on the straight? What's this about? Hello, Gasper. Yeah, I saw it. I didn't know what happened. I wonder why it got disconnected. does not want to <laughs> break for that corner. I'm just pulling away. What's going on? Why am I faster? Oh, here he comes. That's true, I forgot about the bigger bait. Look, I've, I guess I had a better exit off the wide part the corner, but. Wall hacks. Oh no, track limit warning one of five. At least they've changed the penalty system now. Yoink. That's true, we do have premium socks on here. Forgetting that we're doing the uh, short track.
Goodbye. <laughs> I do quite like this track, though. Ah, this corner. Two more laps to go. Nice and smooth. Greg's VR. I wonder if he's playing in VR. <laughs> it's going to be... Experiencing everything in 3D. Cheating, obviously. Random people just getting disconnected. The parrot's been abducted. Yeah, well, I'm sure we'll do these cars another time, but on a on a different track that's uh, not DLC. Try and get a PB here. I think it is. I I. People are saying that they don't have it. Get some welly. Oh, look at that. Seven tenths up there. I think this car's going to be dropping nails automatically. Oh dear. There goes all the time again. <laughs> Hugh. Hugh domination. What a what a result! <laughs> it's only because someone got disconnected. People do seem to get disconnected at random from uh, Madness Engine as well online. I don't I don't know what causes it. If it's like a ping throughput thing, or if it's something else. Three ninety or bust. Right, Pedro Silva second, Greg's VR third, Clinny Clown fourth, Ike Mate fifth, Kim in sixth, Adrisson seventh, Carl and Carl <laughs> in eighth and ninth. I think that's bugged out there. Guys, I'm I'm calling it a night though because I'm knackered. <laughs> I need some early bedtime tonight. Get an energy boost bar going or something. But I think... Uh, I think that... Um, AMS2 has definitely improved a lot. They've definitely done a lot to it. Um, still got some quirks there, which I'm not the biggest fan of. But at least the netcode and everything works. 
and the racing actually works properly. You can have some good racing with it. The fixed setup thing's quite interesting. <laughs> he just finished his sandwich. Uh, actually, I think it might be quite good for doing like random fixed setup racing. But I mean, you always do get that question with AC, with on PC at least, with Automobilista 2. It's like, well, it's nice, but you could just play AC. <laughs> <laughs> you you could just play AC and it's like well that's cheaper has better physics and it's got more tracks and more cars so you know that's the problem I think AMS2 really sort of faces um, unless you wanted to do like I guess if you want to do hosted races yourself and you want to fill it up with AI maybe you just want to race a couple of friends or something it's good for that well I'm, I'm going to get uh, four 390s and run them in SLI for ultimate performance to get 10 FPS in flights in. It's not really uh, focused on one scene though, is it? It's got a whole bunch of random cars. I guess you've got some, Brazil some Brazilian tracks that you don't have in any other sim. But I mean, that's only like four tracks which you could probably download for AC as well, so... <laughs> right. Right. Yeah, guys, so uh, thanks for watching, everyone. Off off to uh, early bedtime. What a, what a hype finish to the stream. Top, top hype. <laughs> but I'll see you guys soon. Oh, no. Well, I said I have to get 6.30, 80s then. God damn it. Yeah, I'll catch you guys soon. Um, I'm not sure when I'm in next for live streaming. I might be doing a video soon. Uh, I, I don't know. If I finish the video early, I'll probably do another live stream. But uh, yeah, take care. Happy sim racing. Happy tea drinking. <laughs> Goodbye. Go, go to Random Call Signs channel. Go to Random Call Signs channel and click the subscribe button. Go, 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 go. Random Call Sign. RandomCallSign.com. www.randomcallsign. PortugueseMan.com. Go to Random Call Sign. Go to RandomCallSign.com.